even now that I'm in a healthy relationship, sometimes like when he's so nice to me and like so kind and so patient, I think to myself, I'm like, am I even like worthy of this? Yeah. Like, because all I've ever known and was you are. What is up, everyone? I'm your host, Alan Ice, and this is Noche de Pendejadas, your favorite talk show turned podcast, and donde yo traigo a tus influencers favoritas para platicar y posiblemente sacarles sus trapitos al sol. Please help me welcome tonight's guests, no nomás una, pero dos, Wendy and Evelyn Ortiz. Hola, hola, ¿cómo están, amigas? I'm Super nervous. I think I'm good. Cuando estaba mirando sus en vivos, yo siempre miraba que la Wendy andaba más nerviosa que la no, Evelyn. Yeah. Yo en mi mente dije, ¿sabes qué? No me puedo poner igual que nerviosa que ellas porque luego no vamos a tener podcast. Exactly. But I feel like it's good. I feel like you guys already, you know, eased it in. Yeah. Ya pienso que estamos un poquito mejor. How has it been being in LA? You guys arrived yesterday. How has everything been? ¿Qué han hecho? Well, I feel like... LA influencer life isn't really like what we expected. We've been yeah. like bougie, like, but LA is like so much more different than yeah. we expected. At the same time, we're like a little bit more on the like less influencer. The so. ghetto? <laughs> <laughs> we did it. We went to LA, like LA, um, the Cajones. Oh, yeah. yeah. LA, I feel like it's not as glamorous as yeah, people no, make it a scene. Like, it's yeah. like a homeless walking, like, no, as that's, you're going that's back. Exactly what yeah. we thought. And I thought it was just going to be like way more. Just like bougie, bougie yeah. I guess. Yeah. But Long Beach, we went to Long Beach. We went to Oxnard. Ox Oxnard, yeah. Yeah, we went to there and it was super nice. Yeah. yeah. So is it your guys' first time coming to LA? Um, LA, LA, yes. yeah. Yeah. Pues para decirles, you guys, en LA, LA no están, verdad? Ahorita no, estamos no. en Orange <laughs> County, which is only like 30 minutes away from LA. Pero uh, nos yeah. estaban contando que ayer se fueron a Los Ángeles. Yeah. I just feel like people piensan que It's, cuando vienen a Los Ángeles que red carpet. That's right. Oh, right I feel like yeah. LA is like one of those like places where like there's a lot of nice areas porque don't get me wrong there's a lot of like nice areas mm -hmm. in LA it's so weird because I've never lived in LA but every time I go it's like when I go to an event like all of it's based in downtown LA right on the yeah. callejones on está todo eso and whenever I'm driving through LA I'm like oh my god like aquí es el evento yeah. and you have like a little like area that's like so ghetto and then the próxima calle is it's all bougie Yeah. It's so weird. Oh, Mary took us to like the, like there's a bunch of homeless. Who was it? Skid oh, Row. Skid, Skid Row. Row. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she took us. She was like, so we can humble you. <laughs> How was the flight? Was it crazy? Um, I know it was only like a two hour flight. Yeah, it was just two hours. I slept like the whole time because I was just, we slept at two and oh, the yeah. flight was at, well, we five woke up at five. Yeah. Oh, so it was shit. three hours of sleep, but yeah. Why'd you guys go to sleep so late? We're, we're packing. I, and I was super <laughs> nervous. I was like, fuck, like, I need to pack this, this, yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I did see that video when they were practicing. Yeah. And I'm like, ¿sabes qué? By the time they get here, siento que van a ser todas unas pinches profesionales because yeah. you guys were practicing weeks in advance. Literally. This is yeah. actually like the first time. Yeah. You know what's so funny, you guys? Ustedes saben que normalmente we never really like expose who the guest is mm -hmm. until like the week of. Yeah. Pero cuando yo las invité a ella, porque let me just say, I posted a TikTok and I was asking you guys que me dijeran who you guys wanted to see on the podcast and let me just say your guys' girls went crazy I know well, we well, asked them wait, I know we told them to <laughs> but like, like it's so crazy like that so many people want to see us or yeah. like we're like okay we're gonna comment like we're gonna tag you I was just, shook because no, yeah. you guys ran those motherfucking comments up yeah. I was like no mames tanta exactly. gente quiere no, saber de Wendy Evelyn pues yeah. yo también you yeah. know what's crazy a couple of days before I kind of discovered you guys mm -hmm. before those comments because I had seen that viral video that went um, viral of you mm -hmm. cuando se te salió la chichi oh no she was always culpándose yeah. so when I saw that and then like days later my comments were flooded with like Wendy and Evelyn Wendy and Evelyn yeah. I was like pues yo también quiero conocerlas yeah. guys. y aquí las tenemos antes de que empecemos con el chisme yo les voy a pasar el micrófono a ellas para que nos digan un poquito más de quién son y qué hacen ok my name is Evelyn I'm a tiktoker influencer youtuber um i'm wendy's twin that's what i'm known for but yeah hi guys i'm wendelin and honestly i don't know what i do i do tiktok youtube and i'm a full-time mother 
She a little nervous. Yeah, I'm super nervous. No, I can tell, yeah. Pero está bien. Saben que you guys, los nervios siempre empiezan in the beginning. Yo siento que as the interview goes, van a mirar que ellas se van a aflojar un poquito and you guys are going to be into yeah. it. I just feel like whenever I do podcasts, I feel like the beginning is always like the ooh. Yeah. Let's try not the vibes, pero yo sé que al fin de esta entrevista ustedes van a quedar igual que impactadas que yo por todo lo que van a conocer de ellas. So, para empezar, yo quiero hablar de algo. Yo estaba en el en vivo que ustedes estaban mm -hmm. haciendo this morning of yeah. getting ready. Les quiero preguntar algo que ustedes pensaron que no les iba a preguntar. I, <laughs> I saw you guys talking about que te habías cagado en México el año pasado. Oh, no. I had seen, and I had seen when it'd be like, I hope he doesn't ask that. No. I know Evelyn's gonna bring that up. Yo quiero que me cuenten eso. ¿Cómo pasó que te cagaste el año pasado, amiga? Oh my a God. A tus so 20 yeah. años. No. It was like, I was like 19, 19, like 19. Like last year. Yeah, so know. that's like even more embarrassing. But um, basically, I had just drank like the um, tap, tap water. Water. and okay. I know like that's like off limits. Like, but we didn't not. know it was yeah. the first time in Mexico. Yeah, and I just took like one, literally like, like a drop of water, and then like we went to sleep, and I literally shit all over like the sheets, like. <gasps> but it wasn't everywhere. It wasn't shit. <laughs> it was these things. No, I didn't. Until I woke up, I was like, oh, wait, why is it a little wet? It was literally water. Like, it no, wasn't even it was shit. It was just total, water. Like, so bad. It was and bad. I was, like, more embarrassed because of, like, I was, like, 19 years old. No, that's a Yeah, yeah. That was oh, that's fucking like, adult. No, yeah, and I was like, fuck, why didn't I feel it? And then we all were, made fun of it. Yeah. Whose house were you guys staying at? Um, like, it was my family. It was, like, But my, it was, like, she did it on the Kobe house, so it was, like, not We that watched bad. it, but... Yeah. Uh, but did you guys tell anyone? Or was no, it, like, no, 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 no. She, I think she told me, and I told my mom. Yeah, but, that was it, but, like... Y ahora sabe todo el mundo. No, everybody ah, knows. Yeah, really? we've talked about it so many times, and it was, like, so embarrassing, no, but... Yeah. But it's not her first time. She has a reputation. Why, yeah, man? She's like, no, tiene no, el culo no, flojo. Let me Literally. Say, and, uh, like, middle, like, no, elementary school. I guess yeah. she was younger, so it's okay. Uh, it's okay, I guess. But when we were younger, we would walk home from school. And I guess she had to go Shit. number two. And when we got to the house, we got locked out. We, like, we were locked out. We couldn't go in. Mm -hmm. We were waiting for my mom to get home from work. So it was like, literally like 30 minutes waiting and she was like sitting on a chair like the patio we were sitting there and then me and my sister tried to like break in from the backyard and we went back and it was like i think i shit myself but wait can i say can i say about oh just go ahead okay so <laughs> might as well uh, <laughs> Yeah. I was like did you actually like shit yourself she was like yeah i did she was like let me check she <laughs> <laughs> when she was like went down there she like yeah there was like i did check but that time was like i had an excuse because like i really needed to go we were locked out well that happened we were, like, often and, and we were young so but, like it's a Uh, it's okay. Yes. I'm like, it's okay. You're like crazy. Old. If it makes you feel better, I feel like the last time I shot myself <laughs> wasn't at 19. <laughs> the last time I shot myself was like at 16. Okay. I used to always hang out with like my friends at her house. Yeah. Ella vivía como like 20 minutes walking from where I lived. Mm -hmm. Pero yo no sé por qué, but ever since I was little, yo tenía trauma de going to the restroom in anyone else's house. I don't know why, but like, yo en mi casa, even in my house now, like, I love my toilet. Like, like you like the vibes the there. Yeah. Because right? like, I feel like You're some like, toilets are like higher, some yeah. toilets are lower. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I already know how like low to squat <laughs> on my toilet. So yo me acuerdo que esa vez que si me cagué, I was already leaving my friend's house y ya tenía ganas de hacer del baño. And I was like, no, 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 like I can wait. Like it's only 20 minutes. Llego como a la esquina. I leave my friend's house. Llego a la esquina. And I'm like, oh shit. Like me están dando ganas más. And I look back because I'm like, wait, I can still go back to my friend's house. But I'm like, wait, like, Like, how embarrassing. Like, you're literally just coming back to cagar. Yeah. And I was like, no. Tengo 15 minutos. I can make it home. Yeah. I start running because, like, as, like, as clo <laughs> the closer you get to your house, like, como que más ganas te quieren mm -hmm. dar. I get to, like, the corner, bitch. I'm literally, like, a minute away from my house. Y ya no podía aguantar. Oh, my God. Yeah, I literally, like, stood there in the middle of the fucking street. And I was like, just fucking let it out, <laughs> no, bitch. Like, no, 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 walking, oh, bitch. I was walking, oh, yeah, I was way. walking in a pinche calle, way. I literally, like, 
fucking walked my ass home all fucking cagado, all fucking looking like, like a like pinguino. you like there and just let it happen? Yeah, like, I literally, I was like, just let it happen. It's because ya estaba en la puntita, wey. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah que se deja salir. Exactly. I got home, went straight to the restroom. I threw away the underwear because I was like, no oh, one's yeah, about exactly. to find out que me cagué. <laughs> me bañé, wey, y ahí fue. Yeah. That's what happened, actually. It's kind of funny because when, like, I shit myself in, like, fifth grade. Um, like, I don't know if you know those little, like, window, um... Like, when there's a downstairs, there's always, like, a little window. Oh, I like, and I went in there, and I was like, oh, fuck, I actually did shit myself. So I took off my underwear. And I you left it there? I left it there. No. <laughs> no and, and, then then like, and then, like, a month later, like, there was workers, like, working there. I was like, wait. Did I They're all my underwear there? No, and I was like, I was like, fuck, I did leave my underwear, but like, I'm sure they. I'm sure they got rid of it. Oh, you know, mierda and shit. Ya vamos a empezar con el pinche chisme. Yo quiero saber un poquito más de ustedes. Voy a empezar con la pregunta que le pregunto a todos. Yo quiero saber más de ustedes as little girls. How was it like growing up? ¿Cómo fueron Evelyn and Wendy growing up? Well, honestly, like, I feel like we don't really remember much, or at least I don't. Like, I don't remember anything past like sixth grade i guess well uh, for me besides wendy shitting herself um i feel like our childhood was pretty good like my mom was a single mom up to like we were what 11 yeah okay so my mom was a single mom up to 11 and then after that we like my stepdad came along and my stepdad has been um with us since then mm -hmm. but our childhood was pretty good like we my mom like took care of us even now like my mom is like super helpful with like like the house like Like, yeah. she's just super helpful. Like, it's just been a good childhood. Yeah. We didn't really grow up with my dad because, obviously, like, they divorced. But we still talk to my dad here and there. But our childhood I, was good. Yeah, I think that definitely, like, affected us as people. Like, not growing up with my dad. Mm -hmm. In what way? Like, like, I don't, I hate saying this, but I think I genuinely, like, have daddy issues. And, like, I just always kind of look for how do i say it like i look for someone to no crying yet honey no no crying yet <laughs> i kind of like for in a man like i kind of look for a father figure yeah. if that makes sense and or i kind of like always want a man's attention and mm -hmm. That just, like, really affected me in more in, like, relationship. Like, I siempre estás buscando someone that, like, takes over that My place dad, that your oh, dad left yeah, empty. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviamente nos cuentan de que no crecieron con su papá. Do you guys remember when was the last time you guys had him in your life? Like, both your parents yeah. together? Actually, like, I don't, like I said, I don't remember much, but I do remember when they split. Like, I don't know why that's such, like, a vivid memory. But I remember that they were like outside, like we had a little trailer and they were outside. They were like arguing about money and it was my brother's birthday. And I think my mom was saying like, oh, you don't even give me money for gifts and shit. I just remember us like starting to go inside. Mom told us to pack stuff. And I remember my dad just sitting like in his little like couch watching a soccer game. And like we were like all leaving and he wasn't really trying to stop us, I guess. I don't really remember. I don't know why no, like that's such... That. Like, that's such a vivid memory I have of everything that happened. Do you feel like having that memory, you know, is that the reason why you feel like it affected you so much? Because you kind of saw him, like, not do anything not to care. keep his family together? Yes. And I think, like, seeing him not care about his family, I think I kind of just crave that attention more. Like, I crave that validation, I guess, from my relationships do you feel that same way like obviamente tú te sientes como que you have daddy issues do you feel like that affected you in that way too i feel like with wendy she like still like tries to like talk to my dad even after like she knows like he didn't try to like stay with us and i feel like i mean i love my dad and stuff but like i don't know like after remembering that i don't remember that honestly but after her remembering that like why would she like still try but yeah. honestly i mean no daddy issues for me but I mean, we had my stepdad our, basically our whole life, like 10 years already, and he's helped us a lot. And it's kind of hard, like, calling him our dad because it's like, he's not our dad, yeah. but he's our stepdad, and, like, we still, like, love him, and he, like, supports my mom and stuff, yeah. so. Like, you guys appreciate everything he, yeah, he did yeah, for you guys. Yeah. No, yeah, exactly, because, I mean, it's been 10 years that he's been with us. He's helped us with, like, getting the house, like, working, like, paying rent. Like, he helps us a lot, so. Yeah. I've always said that men that do that, to me in my eyes are like seen as a better man because mm -hmm. my my 
my boyfriend también, you know, his dad left them. No, uno los dejó se separaron. And yeah. then after se separaron, he was never really in their life. And later on in the years, you know, his mom met their stepdad that is currently in their life. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of hard, you know, when a, when a man takes over, you know, kids que ni son de él. Mm -hmm. I always applaud that because, That's you know, it takes a lot to like be able to be like, you know what? Like, I don't care si no son mis hijas, like biologically. Like but her. las voy a querer y las voy a tratar yeah. como si lo fueron. You know yeah, what I mean? So growing up without your guys' dad, did you guys have like a relationship with him growing up? Or was it with more like... With my dad? Yeah. Well, I don't really remember much, but like she said, I still try to talk to him. I think it's just because I do crave that father figure in my life. So I do try to talk to him. And then just recently when I was pregnant, um, like I would go see him every weekend with my baby daddy. I would go and go and see him. And then I remember I seen him kind of yell at my, I guess she's my stepmom, his girlfriend. He kind of like yelled at her and he was being so mean to her. And that's when it hit me like, fuck, he treated my mom like this. Because I never seen it. You know, yeah. I was super young. I never experienced him, how, like how he treats his girlfriend yeah. or wife. And like when I seen him yell at her, I remember like I, was, I just wanted to leave right away. And I started crying to my baby daddy. I was like, fuck, like this is how he treated my mom. And I never realized it. And so after that, I kind of just stopped, you know, trying to get in contact with him because it was mostly just me like, oh, like um, I would text him. I'd be like, oh, que haces? Puedo ir a tu casa? Like I would just text him. And then after that, I was kind of like, now I know he treated my mom like that. Like, why would I try to get in contact with him? And then I remember I saw this one TikTok that said that the phone works both ways. So I can't be the only one trying to be like oh like can i go see you so it was usually just you yeah and then since i stopped like nothing like he doesn't text me and i do feel kind of bad because i think about it and i'm like i guess he never really experienced a dad because yeah. his dad died really young so he probably just doesn't know how to be a father a father yeah but at the same time like you kind of have to know that's your daughter like like you kind of like yeah you can make it up like yeah, if you definitely. didn't have a father then you want to be that father that you yeah. didn't have to your daughters you know yeah. obviamente nos cuentas that it took you up to that point to realize how he would treat your mom was there ever a moment where maybe both of you guys like resented your mom and maybe were like fuck like por ti because you left like we didn't have a father in our life was that ever like a thing for you guys i don't want to be the only one who talks about this but i do remember um like when i don't know how old we are but i remember we were just all hanging like all my brothers and like my sisters we were like all hanging out downstairs and i remember i was just thinking about my dad i don't know why like i just started thinking about him and then i went up to my mom and i started crying and i was like oh like why isn't my dad here like i started like asking her like why isn't my dad here and she just told me like oh it's because like he doesn't want to but i never really understood that and that's why like it would always just like shock me like oh like why don't we have like my dad here like this is something we kind of need my dad for or like it was just always like something that i feel i lacked just my dad <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like that same way too like did you ever feel like resentment or just kind of confused mm -hmm. as to why like our quince um my mom didn't really want my dad there but he showed up and she like i think kicked him out basically and i didn't really like understand that but i get it now like my dad didn't treat her good and she deserved better so but we didn't understand that till like recently so yeah, yeah our quince like she just started like kicking him out and i was like Like, why? Like, he's our dad. But now I understand, like, why. I feel like eso es lo que viene when it comes to maturing. You know, cuando uno está chiquito, no entendemos muchas cosas. Like, even yeah. now, me, like, at my 25 years old, like, there's even things that I'm barely understanding when it comes to, like, family dynamics. You know, a veces cuando somos niños, like, we only hear, like, the things que nos dicen. Exactly. Or, like, we only hear what people want us to hear. Ya cuando uno crece, we're like, no. Like, they were really mm -hmm. just protecting us from the truth. Pero ya cuando uno crece... I feel like we're in a mind where we're like, no, like we're ready for the truth and we can handle it. You know, yeah. obviamente, se, casa, se vuelve a juntar tu mamá. How was that like? Did you guys, you know, was it hard for you guys to be like, oh shit, we're going to have a stepdad? Or like off the bat, were you guys like, oh yay, vamos a tener un stepdad? How was that for you guys? I mean, honestly, like not to call my mom a hoe, but like she would like, <laughs> but she would like, hang out with lot, lots yeah. of guys like because yeah. she was young still so she would go out and stuff and like sometimes like we would meet guys 
but um it was like you like we were used to it like seeing um new people but when Ricar- uh, ricardo that's his name my stepdad when he came like into our life it was just like like it was just a different thing like he was like serious about like like your mom yeah exactly like you saw that he wasn't just trying to play your mom exactly. yeah, yeah like he was like a stepdad to us like literally like he would like take care of us like i don't know he was just always just there like life. would most of the us. guys kind of just like ignore you it guys was like, and just yeah, pay attention yeah, the, to it mom? was just like a, somebody we're just meeting and yeah like, i feel it, like with my stepdad we kind of knew like oh like yeah. this is actually but it's not just me that my mom would like because there's like a um like, I, like, it's not just me that thinks that right yeah, like, like, oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's good to like. Estaba disfrutando su vida. Estaba soltera. She wanted to meet yeah. people. Mm-hmm. Like, claro que yeah. sí. But like that's that I do remember like a lot of like meeting a lot of new yeah. like guys, and I don't really think like that affected us, affected us in any way except she's like a hoe. I guess no, maybe. Ain't, no. I'm just kidding. But like, no, but, she, but she had her fun, and I feel like yeah, that's good. Like that's, that. That's good. You know, Ricardo started coming more around. You know, he started being more of the family. Was there ever a moment where you guys were like, you know what, like? I actually see him in my life. Like, yeah. I actually see him being with my mom. Y si si tuvieron ese momento, ¿qué fue ese momento para ustedes? Well, I feel like we don't really see him, like, as a dad. I know that sounds kind of mean to say, but we never really talked to him. Like, honestly, like, I don't, I've never had a conversation with him. And, like, the past 10 years, never, like, really like knew, got to know him. Got to know him, yeah. So... I don't know, like right now. Then that's why I say I like lack of father figure in my life. Because even if I had a stepdad, he wasn't really a dad to me. Like you're like, no, no one can replace yeah, my dad. Like, it's like, just, yeah, it's just yeah. a way different feeling, like from my stepdad to my dad. Like if my dad was in my life and doing what my stepdad de- did, I would obviously like, you know, look up to him. But my stepdad, he's not really my your dad. Yeah. yeah. Or was there a moment where you guys were like, you know what? We accept him for my mom. Like we like him for my yeah. mom. What was that moment? Like, obviamente, a la mejor lo miraban que trataba tu mamá mucho más mejor than the way that you saw, you know, your dad treat your mom. Was that a thing for you guys too? Was there a moment for you guys where you're like, you know what? Like, I'm happy for my yeah. mom que encontró a alguien que la quiere. Um, well, basically, I never, like, remember my dad, like, treating my mom bad, but obviously, like, I hear stories, but with my stepdad, it's just, like, I don't really, like, talk to him, honestly, yeah. like, we don't talk, like, at all, he's just, like, there, but, like, I obviously, like, know him and my mom are together, like, he helps a lot. He makes my lot. mom happy, like, yeah. Yeah, like, that's, that's, all that that's, that's all that matters, is that my mom has somebody, and even if we don't see him as a dad, dad. like, he, she's. She has him in her life, so... And they're married, so they're... And I feel like that's, like, the good thing, you know what I mean? Like, and it's great that you guys are understanding that because there is a lot of kids, you know, that come from, like, broken families and Mm -hmm. they don't even let or like their parents que rehagan su vida. Yeah. And I feel like you guys are at an age where you guys are mature enough to be like, no, I want my mom to be happy. I want my mom que rehaga su vida because at the end of the day, you guys are going to grow up, do your life, have your kids, have your family... Y tu mamá, aunque todavía she's going to be coming through, va a quedar sola. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's great that you guys are like, you know what? Like, aunque no tengamos una relación así al 100% con él, sabemos que él quiere a mi mamá, sabemos que se, they're together yeah. y que yeah. se aman. You know, so yo quiero saber, I want to go back in time. Para los que no saben, you guys, Wendy and Evelyn sí son gemelas. Mm-hmm. ¿Quién es más grande? I'm older by two minutes. It was C-section, so it was a lot faster. Okay, yeah. okay. But okay. honestly, like, I see myself as older because I'm, like, oh, yeah, more mature. I <laughs> know. I mean, I, like, I, uh, who's the mommy of the twins? I think I am, But honestly. no, it's because, like, when people meet us, well, I don't know if you, like, thought this, but you could just tell I'm older. Well, no. by two minutes, but, like, you could tell, like, no, the vibe. Okay, can I, let me, I think I, like, put myself, like, I'm older like i'm in control like it's because she's too like shy and too like nervous like when we met like some friends yesterday she was just like there and i was like the one like talking like making conversation like i know instead of arguing you tell us uh, <laughs> what do you, you think what do you funny. think i'm like fuck <laughs> like, i'm putting in the on like, the hot what did you think was older this whole time i'm not gonna lie i thought wendy was older yeah i, I know. Know. 
Yeah. I really did. But you know what I think it is? I feel like when I first started watching you guys, I was like, okay, she has a kid. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah, so I started too. putting yeah. like those things into perspective. And I was like, oh, I think she's older. So cuando les pregunté, I was like, oh, who's older? And you said Wendy. I was like, okay, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. But I, I guess I can see where you come from because she's like more. even though when I was watching their lives, la Wendy era la que estaba más nerviosa. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember going into one of your guys' live. I think it was like yesterday or antier. I think it was yeah. when you guys were packing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And I remember seeing you be like, I don't talk for me. Yo no ando nerviosa. Yo ando yeah. bien. And I remember seeing you being more shy. How yeah. were you guys growing up? Say, did you guys get along? Were you guys super close? Because we know that being twins, a veces, can be a good thing or a bad thing when it comes to being children, you know? Definitely. I feel like it's just different for different twins, you know? But for me and her, we were never really close, like ever i don't remember oh, wait yeah. no when we were like in middle school we were close well like i don't know even then we wouldn't tell it like each anything. other's secrets yeah we okay. wouldn't tell each other anything and that's why i feel like we're not really close but we did share rooms and stuff so that's how we were close but still like i didn't know anything about her and still she doesn't know anything about me i don't know anything about her yeah, I feel like um, I saw the Murillo Twins um, podcast and they seem like besties, like for lifers. And we're, I feel like it's just so different between us because we just hate each other. I think so. Well, no, we don't. Ah, <laughs> we don't I'm, like, <laughs> ah, I'm like, damn. Ah. No, but how do you feel like, do you feel like there's a reason to why were you guys not as close? Like, were you guys just into different things growing up? Like, nada que ver? Because I feel like growing up, especially like, Niñas, I feel like las mamás les gusta vestirlas igual, yeah. les gusta que todo sea igual. Did that bug you guys or well, what was the reason I que you guys weren't like, so cercanas? I think just growing up or the way you're raised definitely like, affects everything. Like anything you could think of, grow, like the way you grew up affects it. So I think like my mom isn't really like, I don't know how to explain it. Like we're, we're, we were never really close, like with my brother, my sister, with my mom. Like we were never close. So I feel like that kind of affected the way we are because you know, we're not close. You know what's so crazy? Wait, yeah. I thought we were close. Ah, you know, you were best in time. <laughs> no, but I think I understand where Wendy's coming from because I was literally just having this convo with my boyfriend last mm -hmm. night. We were literally like driving home and it was like those moments where I was like having like really deep thoughts and I was telling him, I was like, you know what's so crazy? Because no que ando peleado con mis siblings, pero no andamos al cien ahorita, yeah. um, especially like after Thanksgiving. Um, and I was telling my brother, I was like, you know what's so crazy, especially with my oldest brothers because somos cuatro mm -hmm. son um i have two older brothers uno que tiene como 30 y algo otro que tiene 30 mm -hmm. then it's my sister which i want to say i'm the closest to but even then there's like boundaries it's like you love her we respect each other but it's not like she knows all my tea or i know yeah. all her tea mm -hmm. and i and i was telling my boyfriend i was like you know what's so crazy like growing up i feel like all our siblings kind of had their own thing going on like yeah. i was getting into this my sister was getting into like the thug life my oldest brother was like already working in su propio mundo like yeah. i feel like there was never like moments where we kind of were all like oh tell me your cheese yeah. sis. Like, you know, so i feel like now as an adult i feel like that kind of affected us in the way as like no somos tan unidos como me hubiera gustado yeah. and i always tell my boyfriend because my boyfriend is super like this con su sister con su hermano yeah. i always tell my brother i was like i'm so happy for you and i hope you never go through like that in life where you yeah. feel like you're not as close to your siblings because it is like sad you know what i yeah. mean especially because you know you grow up with these people and as you get older you kind of drift apart do you guys feel like now as adults you guys have gotten closer uh we've always like talked about this but like social media like since we started social media it has kind of like that's the reason we even talk because yeah. if it wasn't for i guess this or like tiktok youtube we literally wouldn't even talk to each other. Talk? Yeah. I'm like, ahorita les pongo un pinche ring. Aquí se ponen a pelear. No, but que era el pedo? Like, you guys wouldn't talk like that or what? No, well, it's because like, I wouldn't, like, if I'm talking to someone, I don't know why I just wouldn't tell her. Uh -huh. Like, like it's never been like, like you and your siblings, like, we're not close. We don't tell each other cheese, man, like nothing. When we got older, like me and my older sister, like my older sister has been telling me stuff, like I've been telling her stuff. But with her, it's just like, I don't know what's wrong. No, but like, like I said, the way you grew up, because like, I know if I tell her something, someone else is going to figure out if I tell my older sister something, my mom's going to figure out if I tell my mom something, my sister's going to figure out. But so you I tell just, your 12K viewer life. Why, yeah, ah, no, no. But you tell the whole world. I, 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 
like I just feel like obviously like more like deeper secrets, yeah. but I just feel like I can't really trust, trust in what yo. <laughs> Like, ahorita van a andar en el chongo con el chongo, no, amiga. Yeah, I just feel like I, even if it's, I don't know. I, it is the way I grew up, you know, like the way I was raised. That has a lot of, to do with it. Do you guys feel like growing up as twins, did you guys ever struggle with like wanting to be your own person, like individuality? Do you feel like maybe that's what kind of separated you guys along because maybe people would compare you guys or to be like, oh my God, las gemelas, you stay esa huevo. We're like, no, I'm not her. She's not me. I'm myself. Was that like a struggle you guys had growing up? I mean, growing up, I feel like, We've always been the twins. Like in high school, we were like the twins. But when we got older, I don't, we're still, I don't know. I, I don't think we're the twins anymore. I think we're just yeah, one we day. Are. No. Oh, yeah. Because I feel like with anything, like, like if we have a friend group, oh, the twins. The twins, yeah. Oh, with like if TikTok, oh, the twins. No, but I feel like on TikTok, it's more Wendy or Evan, yeah. you know, like they know. How are you guys in school? Like, obviamente eran gemelas. I always remember growing up when there was gemelas in school. Siempre se juntaban juntos. Eran ustedes así o cada una tenía su propio grupo? Well, in middle school, we used to hang out like besties. But then I feel like high school, we kind of like drifted apart because we are so different. She used to hang out with different people. I hung out with nobody. <laughs> but she hung out with, like, her group of friends, and I, like, was to myself. Uh -huh. So I feel like that's the, I guess we were different, so obviously she hung out with yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, yeah, that's like, true. Yeah. <laughs> How were you guys in school in the sense of, like, were you guys the popular girls? Were you I guys, like, the loners? Eran peleoneras. Have you guys ever been in a fight? Yeah. Like, we, we were hot chino girls. Hot chino girls. Wait, no, wait, wait. Cuéntenme una. Wait, okay. together? The last fight was freshman year, but literally throughout middle school, we were, like, fighters. Like, we would fight, like, every bitch that came at us. Like, we did not care. We were hot chino girls, like, to the max. But it wasn't really, like, when you think hot chino girl, you think, like, outgoing. You think, like, oh, like, I'm a fuck this bitch up I'm fuck this bitch up I'm fuck this bitch up and like I guess like I actually like yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm like but, yeah. like but like we weren't really hot chill girls in that aspect it was just like if somebody had a problem with us like we, we, we would really, go and yeah. like, we would take it really personal like no me cales yeah, because take I'll it, take it personal yeah we would take it really personal to be like okay like fuck you bitch like we'll fight But it wasn't really like that we started the argument, so, yeah. No, but, like, any bitch that came with us were like, you want to fight or not? Like, it was like that. Like, Pero yo quiero saber esa última vez, oh, cómo yeah. pasó, por qué se pelearon. Díganme todo ese chisme, amiga. Uh, I already, like, made a story, but, like, I guess a lot of people don't know, but freshman year, literally our first day of freshman year, it was crazy. Like, some girls had, like, problem with us, but they, it wasn't that they had a problem with us. It was just that they knew we could fight, so they wanted to, like, prove that they could beat us up. Yeah, and, like, these, it was two girls, but they, like, always had a problem with us. And it was more, like, jealousy type of thing, because, like, you could just tell, like, they looked they looked for anything they could argue with argue us over. With, They'd yeah. be like, oh, you did this. Oh, you looked at me this way. Oh, you walked past me. Oh, oh you, you wore this. red lipstick today, because <laughs> I wore red lipstick. Like, girl. Yeah, like, it was, like, that type of thing. So, um, those girls were just always after us. And then, I, I guess, I don't know, but they just had a problem with Wendy. And, like, I wasn't really part of it because I was more, like, the to myself no. type of girl. And she was, like, the more hot girl. Like, she was known to, like, fight. But yeah. I was, like, to myself. I've only fought, like, once. We had a best friend named Tatiana, and she had a younger sibling named, um, what was her name? I don't know. You like they had a younger yeah, sibling. She, had a younger huh? sibling. she was like in sixth grade, and then um, it was after school. She came up to us. She was like, "Oh, hey, this kid is bullying me," and we we're like, "Oh." So then we snitched on him. Like we snitched, but we we're like, "Oh yeah, this kid is bullying this this girl. person." Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then we just like ignored it. We we're like, "Okay, they're gonna figure out what to do." The next day, um, we found out that little boy was. Um, the girl's sibling like oh, one of the ones was jealous okay. of us yeah it was her sibling so um then i guess like she figured out like we snitched and she just started texting me she was like oh like you did this you did that oh and then she started saying oh you talked about my mom i was like what like what is the correlation there she's like you talked about my mom i was like i don't give a fuck about your mom like why would i talk about her i don't know her she just kept texting me and obviously like we took everything personal so i would kind of like text back i'd be like yeah shut the fuck up bitch like whatever i just kind of ignored it i didn't really think much of it And then it was like after my class after lunch, I just was walking into class, like all like first week of freshman year. I'm like, so excited. Yeah. And then um, I just walked in and then their 
their brother that was in my grade. So they like it was their whole family that hated us. But their brother that was in our grade, he came up to me. He was like, why are you talking about my mom? I was like, and then I was like super shy. Like you can tell, like I'm just super like nervous. And I was like, I'm not talking about your mom. He was like, Wait, yeah. No, he was shorter than you. You were like, oh, oh yeah, I'm not talking he about like, <laughs> He was like 4'11". Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm not thinking about your mom. And he was like, yeah, you're talking shit about my mom, blah, 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 blah. I was like, I'm not. So he slapped me. Yeah. And then I was just kind of like shocked. So I was like, fuck, like, I just ignored it. I didn't, like, there's not much I could do. And did people see him slap everybody, you? Everybody, yeah. Like, everybody was, like, was around, around me. Around, and then yeah. he walked away and I was like, okay, fuck, finally. Like, and I was just there, like, yeah, I was like, fuck? finally, I can walk into my, like, class and uh, high finally, I can be a scholar. Yeah. Ah. I was like, got slapped. Yeah, after then, you got bitch slapped. No, yeah, and then I was like walking away, and then his sister, same thing. She was like taller than me. She was like, oh, she's, she was like, why are you talking about my mom? I was like, I'm not talking about your mom. And I was like, I just told your brother, like, I why would I talk about somebody who I don't know? She bitch slapped me too. But it was just like they wanted to fight, like regardless what yeah. we said or anything, they just like wanted to fight. Like, and that, like, yeah, to see like, what you and would that do. was their their excuse, like, oh, you're talking about my mom. So she slapped me, and then. And I saw that, and obviously she's like six foot. I'm like, what the fuck do I do? And like, obviously, like I'm not gonna let anybody slap Wendy because we were like, we we're the only people that would hang out with each other. Like we were just us two. Yeah. And well, I was. I like, mean, it was the, the first fuck? day of ninth grade. Exactly. Yeah. And like, I feel like that's what it's like. The good thing about being twins that you always have someone with you. Like regardless, first day of ninth grade, first day of like anything, like senior year, like you always have your sister, like your partner, your twin. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. Um, I was like, what the fuck? Like, what do I do? And like, I see her walking out and I'm like, I like get scared. I'm like, what the fuck do I do? So I see her like little ponytail and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm getting that right there. <laughs> I was like, yup. <laughs> You're like, that's mine. <laughs> I like pull her down and she's like a lot bigger than us. So yeah. I'm like surprised I even got her down. I got her down. I'm like, bitch, 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 bitch. And I just like beat her up. At that point, like I had already black, like, I don't know why I black out when I'm in so, any like, altercation. But, like, I completely backed out once the brothers stopped me. And then, like, I, re I don't even remember seeing her fight or anything. But I do remember their other sister. Like, like it's literally their whole family. Like, their grandma, like, must have been outside waiting <laughs> the for The grandma us. was all the lunch. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, like, the other sister, obviously, like, she's going to, like, try to fight me. So we fought, and I kind of lost that. But you win some, you lose some. No, How but... But, but I, she won. I, I beat did. that bitch's ass. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Have you guys ever gotten beat up to where you're like, fuck, I learned my lesson. Wait, ah. there, there was this one girl that kind of, I guess, beat one the up, but she literally didn't even beat her up. She was punching her ass. I was yeah. like, what the fuck? And then, <laughs> two, no, the and then she, I think she felt like all big and bold. So no. she was like, oh, I want my round two. I want my round two. I was like, okay, I guess. And then I beat her ass the second round. And that's when, that's when everyone was watching. So I was like, well, did I really lose? Like, no, because nobody, nobody saw her getting the first round. Oh, no one saw the first yeah. round. Yeah. And then she, she wanted everybody to see her, like, if she could beat me up. Oh, you know? that's yeah. it. She was like, round two, yeah. round two. Yeah. She was bold. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. Por pendeja, de, toda la escuela miró que te la yeah. 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 What was that like? Obviamente, did you guys get suspended a lot? Yeah, I'm, we did actually. But it didn't matter. We kept beating. Yeah. Uh, but it didn't matter. Yeah, I was down for the vacation. Like, ah. it, anybody that, literally, anybody that came up to us were like, okay, let's fight. Like, yeah. we were. So well, it was more like if there was like one small little thing, like they said this, they said that, like anything, we would be like, we would let's be very fight. We'd be very defensive about that. Yeah. So that's why we got in so many fights. But we were like so bold and like defensive because we knew we could fight. Like yeah. not to kiss our ass, but, but we, we knew know, we could fight because yeah. we would practice with each other. Like we would box each other and we yeah. still do to and this day. And that sounds very like hot Cheeto girl of us, but like, it, but it's like okay. just the adrenaline of fighting, I guess. It's yeah. just super like... And then to this day, we still like box each other. We have some boxing gloves. Oh, wait, for real? <laughs> yeah, we go live and we box we each other. We do that, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like it's different, but... but I don't know. It's different boxing. I run away from no. her. Quién gana normalmente cuando se pone. Like if I were act like actually like fight her like she was like any other girl, I'd like beat her. Um. I know, honey. Ah, yeah. I know. Let's settle it right now. <laughs> ah. I'm like, Irma, traele los guantes. Ah. I mean, we have gloves at home, but I just like run away because it's like. 
She's scared. I don't want to hurt her. You know what's funny though? Know? Because yo también growing up, me and my siblings, oh, wey, nos agarramos a putazo como que si no éramos hermanos. Yeah. Right? Like my mom would be like, ustedes no parecen hermanos, parecen animales. And I remember I would be like, you too, bitch. Like I would beat up my sister, but the moment my sister, because my sister's older, I'm the, I'm the youngest. Yeah. The moment my sister would be like, no, 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 the other way around. My sister would beat me up. Okay. And the moment when I would get mad, I would go crazy. But like my going crazy was like, ah! Like, yeah, ah, so like, and my sister would run away because she would get scared. She's like, scared. I know it's a loco. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. So, obviously, when's the last time you guys got down? I like yesterday. Ah, uh, it was when we boxed each other. Yeah, but it was, it was like, like a couple months ago. You know, it was like eight months ago. But like, she's gotten in a fight with my older sister, like an actual yeah. fight. It was like in the morning. You tell. Them. Well, this whole story, this whole podcast is like um, story fights. Fight. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you're like the twins of Pelionera. Yeah. Ah. It was my older sister, like, we never really got along. We were never, well, I guess, like, we don't get along, but it's not really, like, I hate her type of thing. But, like, with my sister, like, I don't know why we always just had this kind of, like... Tension. Tension, yeah. And so one time in the morning, like, I don't even remember what had happened. Like, all I remember is we just started arguing and arguing, and then, like, I got super mad, so, like, I just, like, grabbed her hair, and she had a brush, so then she, like, threw it at me. And, like, I was, like, 12 years old, so I was, like, Mommy, big me big boy, Joanna. So I just started crying, and my mom obviously believed me. And so she got mad at my sister, and she was, like, Wendy, quédate en la casa. Like, you don't have to go to school. So, like, I was pretending, like, I was, like, all hurt. And then, yeah, she just got super mad, but... Okay, let's all say that she she was taking the car out of the garage and she, and she crashed, crashed that day. Yeah, Cause no, she my, was so mad. My I think. older sister, yeah. Like, we were just, like, we like if I could fight her... You would. I would, ah, yeah. Like, like, give her the boxing yeah. gloves. <laughs> but I was just there. I was just asleep, and I was, like, hearing all this. But I was like, oh, whatever. Yeah, like, I, this I'm is like, normal. Yeah. Ah, like, this is how I wake up yeah. every single day. That's crazy. So, obviamente, you know, you guys start growing up. And being twins, yo siento que hay muchas gemelas que dicen that they love it and they hate it. What are, like, your guys' things that you guys love about being twins? And what's something that you guys hate about being twins? I think, like... One thing I do, like, like about being twins is that I just always have someone. Like, right now, if I didn't have her, obviously, like, I would be doing You'd be panicking, myself, yeah. Or, like, vice versa, she would be by herself, and it would just be way more nerve-wracking. I nerve would be okay, but... Why, yeah, man? <laughs> like, it would just be more nerve-wracking doing all this by yourself. So, I feel like you just always have that person with you. you like, know? the support yeah. of that second yeah. person. How do you... What do you think is, like, your favorite thing about being a twin? I think that, like, we're just very honest with each other. Like, if she oh, looks, yeah. like... If her eyeliner looks ugly, I'm gonna be like, fix that shit. If like anything looks bad, we're gonna tell each other. Like we're straight up. Like yeah. I feel like that's what I like about being twins. But the thing I dislike is being compared. Like if it has a fatter ass, Wendy's flat. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> no, yeah, that's like one thing I just always hate. And then like I hate it so much because people think we're the same person. So like when she looks ugly, I'm like, fuck, people are gonna think that's me out there, like looking that ugly. So it's just like always in my mind, like people think I'm her and people think I'm her. So it's just like it's always in the back of my mind. You're like, no, 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 no. That's why I'm so honest with her. I'm like, like, fix this, fix that, fix that, because I don't want her to I guess like like a fool. Yeah, ah, no, like, exactly. yeah, I guess I don't want her to make me seem like like I'm her you know I don't know yeah and like with us being live like we always get compared because we're like on the screen and stuff and they're like oh when these this if is that if is this like you know they just like compare us and they're like oh when they look so much prettier I'm like bitch you know damn well like I don't <laughs> like they always like they just come for us for no reason I'm yeah. like we're twins like like obviously yeah. one is gonna like look more different than the other one like but honestly like I don't know like sometimes they do say like oh if is this if it has a fatter ass but like i don't really pay attention to it because i'm like i know people just like to talk shit yeah, they yeah. Say shit to say shit. especially like on live they find stuff to hate on even if it's like the prettiest thing they're like oh my god your eyelashes look so ugly and like everybody follows and i'm like but i think that's more because we do lives i feel like that's more of a live thing to like, get a reaction no yeah. yeah definitely and like when we post stuff like there's always people there's never people who hate on us like there's always people who support us so being live is way different than you know, posting stuff. Like normal content. Yeah. You guys, like controlled content. Yes, because sometimes definitely. when it's live, uno nunca sabe lo no, que vaya yeah. a pasar, no? Mm -hmm. Do you guys feel like as you guys have gotten older, now that you guys are doing social media and you guys have such a large following, you know, always watching you guys, do you guys feel like the comparing has gotten worse? Yeah. 
Well, I feel like now it's just more, like we notice it more because it's more people, obviously. Like when we were younger, um, like in school, we would just be known as like the twins and shit. But like now that it's more like TikTok type thing, it's more people saying, oh, the twins, oh, like. Or like oh, they're trying to like pick you guys apart. Yeah. Like, esta tiene esto y esta no. Oh, esta, yeah. esto y esta Like no. it's more people noticing more things and like mentioning more things. Does that affect you guys? Um. Well, I feel like since Wendy has more followers, she has obviously more people like on her side. And like every time I go on the live, they're like, if it's so ugly, if it's so annoying, if it's so mean, if it's so that. And like, I'm just there like. Okay, and like recently, like I've been trying to like stay away from that because that's honestly just like it's draining. It's draining, yeah. yeah. So like I'm trying to do my own thing and not like be so much like a part of her life. And I feel like that's just what kind of affects us is that just people pick and choose. They yeah. pick and choose. But I think that's also like the part of like a part of doing this because like if you were to go live and like we were to be in it, they'd be talking shit about us because they support you. Yeah. You know, they don't really know us. So like that's the thing. Like they. They support who they support, and mm-hmm. that's not really... Like- I, I get you 100%, yeah. because I literally have these combos with my boyfriend and my friend, because they have their own YouTube channels. But I always tell them, I was like, at the end of the day, when someone's watching, let's say they're watching her vlog, you know what I mean? Like, they're seeing your life in your point of view so obviously a lot of the girls are gonna be like "Ooh, evelyn evelyn yeah, yeah, yeah. so when they're seeing your life in your point of view like you're basically whoever's point of view it is you're basically the star do mm-hmm. you get does that make yeah. sense like yo veo mucho eso when i was on your guys's live i was seeing you know just like the little comparisons but i feel like that's what comes with social yeah. media i feel like people online siempre quieren ver a ver con que chingan yeah. and sometimes it comes down to where like si tu en verdad dejas que te chinguen eso you know what i mean yeah. so ya para hablar un poquito más Let's go ahead and back trace five years from now. Mm-hmm. Cuando tenían 15 años. Mm-hmm. Tuvieron quinceañera. Y si, si, ¿cómo fue todo eso? Did you guys have like a twin quinceañera or did you guys have it alone? Yeah, we had a twin quinceañera. It was pink. Okay. And honestly, like we're both kind of whitewashed. So we don't know how to dance. We don't know how to like do any of that. So having a quince is like kind of weird for us because what are we going to do at a quince yeah. besides dance, which we don't know how to do. Yeah, and also, um, like, we're both shy and awkward, so having a quinceañera was kind of, like, more, like, like, all the attention was going to be on us. Like, everybody was going to want to talk to us. So we were kind of like, fuck, like, we don't really want all that attention. Even though, like, we like attention. Like, it's just way different when you... Especially when you're, like, the quinceañera girl. Hey, pa hey, over there, over there, talk to you over here, dance with you over there. Like, it's just... It was super, like, nerve-wracking for us. I remember when, you know how, like, the quinceañera, like, says a speech? speech. And they're like, gracias por venir, like, all that. We were forced to do that. And, like, they they gave us the mic and we're like, like, we didn't know what to do. And, like, I wanted to cry so bad and I just gave it to my mom. Yeah, but it's like, we're both so, like, shy and, like, nervous that we can't, like, say... You guys got stage fright, yeah. Yeah. we were like, what the fuck do we say? And, like, especially because we're no sabo. Like, we were like... We don't know what to say. Like, gracias y vayanse a su casa. <laughs> Please. Did you guys, obviamente nos cuenta que you guys grew up so differently. Was it hard to, like, come to terms with, like, agreeing on the same dress color, agreeing on, like, certain decorations? Or was that all like, ah, que sea lo que sea? Yeah, like, I feel like that was more, like, my mom's party type of thing. Like, the quinceañera was, like, my mom wanted the quinceañera. My mom wanted us to, like, do this. My mom wanted us to do that. But we did agree. But at the end of the day, like, those are my mom's friends. Those are my mom's, like people you know i feel like when we were younger it was like way easier to agree on stuff but now that we're older like if we were to have a quinta now we would fight about the color what color would you guys have now Uh, i think pink i think like a red floral dress would be so okay so lo bueno que la quinceañera fue los pinche porque si no hubiera otro pinche pleito amigas so obviamente en todas las fiestas especialmente en una quinceañera en una fiesta así de grande siempre pasa algo que las tías andan de pleito que drama con los chambelanes que drama con las damas was there ever like drama when it came down to you guys quinceañera if so que el drama amigas well it's not really drama it's just sad but our like our gifts were in the entrance so there was like a bunch of gifts and like not trying to kiss my ass but it was pretty packed the venue was so packed and there were just people here and there there were people standing next to the gifts you know like after quince like we opened the gifts and stuff when we were opening the gifts there was some missing so people were stealing gifts <gasps> And, and they put like beer bottles in there. Yeah, it was and crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, okay. No, and, and, and it was an open invite too, so it was like it could have been anybody, like yeah. their so, friends. People in Denver probably know, but there's a thing called Fairgrounds. It's like a big venue, and like everybody has their quince there. So it's like you can just walk in. Like the doors open, basically. Yeah, oh, no shit. security, nothing. So 
Anybody could walk in, steal gifts, and just sleep. Yeah. Wait, don't do that. Well, yeah. De la fiesta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that's the only... Th oh, well, I, I guess my mom and my dad. My dad got kicked out, but I oh, don't yeah. know. Was he invited or no? He, well, like, I don't really, like, remember much of that. I just remember, like, um, when it was, like, the... Um, the father daughter dance i just remember like they we did we did a dance with my stepdad and then they kind of skipped over the song we were supposed to dance with my dad and i remember i started crying i was like like what about my like actual dad like i'm not dancing with him and like we just started crying and then we ended up telling like the dj like oh like we still need this song to dance with him oh wait the drama between the dj and the banda oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's so funny because the, the banda was playing and they had like a certain time like 12 midnight like they oh, were supposed yeah, yeah. to leave but the DJ I guess like had beef with them so the DJ kept playing yeah they were kind of fighting they were gonna fighting play, yeah. like, ah, so we kept the band yeah, so yeah, no, like, uh, but we kept the banda for longer so that's yeah. good we didn't even pay for it so, yeah. 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 so it was worth it honestly yeah. so what they were just like playing off yeah, on each other like, yeah they were just like yeah they were just like I would have been yeah, pissed, bitch. Like, why la agarras a putada afuera que mi fiesta no yeah, that's exactly, crazy. Yeah. But do you guys feel like overall you guys had like a good quinceañera? Yeah, honestly, like I just I just remember my my like one of my cousins asking me to dance and I danced with him and he was like, Who taught you how to dance? And that's why I don't dance anymore. Ah, yeah, like, like, that's, like, I got scared you, after yeah. that. Bitch. I was like, what do you mean? Like, I just don't know how to dance, so. Do you think it has been chingo? Yeah, I know. Like, 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 <laughs> Y'all being the payasa of the yeah. party. Oh my God, I didn't know we invited a payaso. Yeah. Ah, but even, even now, we don't know how to dance. And tonight, we're actually going to Pico, which is like banda, like dancing, and we do not know. So we're trying to look. I don't know, know like, like, like. Honestly, si no malas es así, mira, it looks yeah, like you're dancing. Looks, yeah. Like, yeah. Do much. Then, then uh, our, friend, our friend yesterday was like just just like kick the dirt around they wouldn't even notice. <laughs> no literally pico I've, yeah. I've gone to pico a couple times and i feel like pico's like one of those things where like nomás hasta mensa yeah, like, they won't notice. no yeah, one's gonna notice just, like nobody really like cares like, i feel like that's the thing like we get so stuck in our head like yeah. oh my god everyone's noticing us but like yeah. al fin del día la gente anda bailando la gente anda peda que al fin del día le vale verga lo que care, todos yeah. hagan verdad so yeah. yo ya quiero saber un poquito más de lo actualmente. Hoy en día las miro all over my For You page. Let me just say, after that TikTok that went viral of your chichi coming out, <laughs> my whole For You page has been Evelyn and Wendy. Evelyn and Wendy. Yeah. Que algo pasó con ellas. Like, yo me estoy dando cuenta de todo lo que les pasa through my For You page. Antes de que empezaron a salir en toda la For You page, yo quiero saber cómo empezó todo esto. How did you guys start social media and what inspired you guys? A lot of people think that it was just when they started TikTok and now she's like popping but no we actually started like six years ago YouTube when oh, we were in shit. high school we started doing YouTube and I mean it was just for fun like we never thought anything of it just like makeup tutorials nobody really cared yeah. but there was this one video it was her fight story time it blew oh, up was all ghetto like this all no, it was about. like <laughs> <laughs> um, that blew up it had like 100k views yeah. and that, we're like okay okay and then one of our other videos it was us sneaking out we we're like 16 so yeah. that blew up too and after that we we're doing good we we're doing good but we stopped like we went ghost on everybody for like a year yeah. just cuz yeah, um, just well the reason was like i just kind of want to talk about this because i saw valentina talking about this about like the depersonalization okay. realization thing um that was like around the time same thing happened like with her i had smoked weed one time and well every time i smoke weed i kind of like freak out paranoid type thing but this last time i smoked a lot i just kept hitting like i was like like i just didn't care after that it started hitting me and i started freaking out it was just like everything felt so fake so she and can't hang i'm like so don't invite her <laughs> But um, I remember she was playing Fortnite. Like after I smoked, I was like w walking to her because she knows how how to that deal with feels. it. Yeah, 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 she knows what that is. So I was like trying to walk to her, and she was playing Fortnite. And like I just remember myself like picturing myself being in Fortnite. Like <laughs> I was like the player. I was like John Wick. Like no, <laughs> no, but it was like way more than that. Like no, it was weird. that time was like damn like. It was crazy. It was I just remember bad. her like telling everybody like, "Kill me, kill me! I'm gonna kill myself." Oh, yeah. Cause that she was like, "So bad." Oh, it sounds like she's crazy, but she's not. It was just the weed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, like it's you're paranoid. The way, yeah, it's just yeah. the way. Um, it's called the weed induced psychosis. It's just the way my brain like handles weed. After that, I just remember like um, even the day after, I would I still felt that feeling, and it happened. Like I felt that same. I felt high for like forever, and oh, I remember shit. I would cry to her. I'd be like, I don't know what to do. Like I need to talk to a therapist. Like I actually feel like something is wrong with me, and like I would just cry to her all the time. She's yeah. very 
not proud, but she's very like talkative about that situation. Yeah, and that's why, like, when I saw Valentina talking about it, I like I enjoy when she talks about it because I went through the same exact yeah. thing. Yeah, so like if anybody else is going through it, like it's not weird. it's relatable. It's, yeah. I feel yeah. like it happens yeah. to a lot of us. Yeah, like I had felt high for like forever, and it was during COVID time. So when you when you're going through that, you kind of feel crazy. You're like, fuck, am I? Because you, you feel like everything's, like, nothing's Fake. real. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then you're like, oh, fuck, am I, like, crazy for thinking this? And it was during COVID time. So then, like, I would see my teachers talking about, like, oh, like, there's this virus going on. Like, this is happening. I'm like, wait. Like, bitch, that's fake. No, uh-huh. I'm like, wait, am I making this shit up? Like, is, like, is this all fake? And, like, I just felt like I was going crazy. And it was just a really bad time in my life. And I just stopped doing what I loved doing, which was filming videos. And I really do regret you know stopping like stopping yeah when you were going through that do you feel like it affected you not just in the video aspect but just like in your daily routine like was it hard for you to like even do daily tasks because of that yeah no yeah like definitely i feel like now i'm not who i would have been if i didn't go through that you know like i would have been way different if i hadn't gone through all that so i guess I don't know if I'm happy I went through that or not, but I do know I would be way different if I like. Had it's it. like a scary thing. Yeah. To do you smoke anymore? Or yeah. No. no, definitely. Like even when I'm, with, even when I smell it, I'm like I, I get kind of. And when we were at the airport, we smelled it, and I like I was like freaking out. I was like, damn, I hope she doesn't have like yeah. a episode right now. Like, yeah. well, she doesn't have episodes, but, but sometimes I just feel like weird. freak out. Like yeah. the smell mm-hmm. triggers mm-hmm. you. It's very triggering, and I feel like that's something como tú dices, like. It's good that you're proud to talk about it and it's good that you want to advocate about it because it happens mm-hmm. a lot, you know. It almost feels like your soul is watching yourself do that's, everything. Yeah, that's exactly like even right now that's how I feel like I don't feel right like, now. Ah, she <laughs> <all> feels herself <laughs> behind her. <laughs> like I just don't like I don't feel like I'm really Talking. There, yeah, 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 I just feel like I'm just watching this, you know. That's crazy. Yeah. So obviously, you know, you guys stopped doing social media because of that. Mm-hmm. When was the moment that you guys were like, you know what, let's continue? Como, como empezaron otra vez a hacer el contenido? Well, it wasn't really me that started. It was Wendy. She got pregnant and she was starting like to post a lot about her pregnancy. And she, I think she posted, I think she posted her gender reveal, and that like kind of went viral. And people were commenting, "Oh my God, I remember from you. I remember from." I don't know. I remember you from YouTube. Like, oh my God, I remember when you were on YouTube. And like, that's kind of like what built up like yeah. the audience. And when I seen like, oh, like people still remember me. I remember during that time, I would see other people go live mm-hmm. and like do... Like TikTok content. And do what, what like I wanted to do. And it's so crazy because... Like Jake, I'm gonna bring up other people, but Jaco, he talked about how he had a dream about starting the like the, the dad wiggies. The dad wiggies. And it's so crazy because literally the day before I went live for the first time, I had a dream that I was going live. And like it's just so weird to think of now because like that was it like was just, meant it, to be. It was, yeah, meant, it was to meant to be. Yeah. yeah. I feel like a lot of the time, like I hear a lot of stories of people that, you know, now do social media. It's crazy because lo que es para ti es para ti. You yeah, know what definitely. I mean? Like you guys stopped for a while, maybe when you guys were barely starting, but the good thing that you guys picked it right mm-hmm. the fuck back up and you guys were like, you know what? Le voy a seguir. And now yeah. we're here. And now you guys <laughs> yeah, are literally here. Yeah. So obviamente empezaron a hacer TikToks. You started doing them too with her. Was there ever a moment where you guys were like, damn, bitch, like, this turned into something que ni yo misma me hubiera imaginado and if so what was that moment for you guys well we would always go live and like max viewers like 500 and it was never like about the viewers like anything we're just like we just being enjoy. live is like yeah. so entertaining you get to talk to people like right then and there so it's like so entertaining so 500 viewers max and then the more we went live we used to go live getting ready together doing this like doing anything really and the the viewers obviously built up and when she 100k i feel like that's when i realized i was like damn like that's crazy yeah. 100k is like it's a lot of people yeah, yeah. it's a whole stadium crazy. not oh, even yeah. a stadium it's more than a stadium yeah. that's crazy and even now like it still kind of like shocks me like i still don't even believe that people actually watch me and we don't even see ourselves as influencers like we're just us, like I guess. small town girl <laughs> yeah. no, but, like, when people come up to me or like I don't know. Like, I just find it so shocking that they're, like, real. Like, does it feel fake? It just like, feels... Yeah, it feels so crazy because I'm like, fuck, like, people actually watch me. It's not just, 
like it's a not number. Just, yeah, yeah. It's a number. I feel like that's when it really hits you because like you can have 10,000, 12,000, but you don't really imagine how many mm. people that really is. And it's not till like you meet them in person and you're like, wow, there's a face to that number. Yeah. There's a face to that person. And I feel like it must feel amazing when no, you guys get no, those people no, that yeah. are like, oh my God, I love you guys. Me yeah, encanta. and it's like such a like cute feeling like knowing people genuinely yeah. love watching us and yeah we just i just always get shocked i'm like fuck like people like mm -hmm. like us you know are you guys currently doing social media like full-time it was just recently that i started like knowing i could do this full-time i haven't even gotten my biggest paycheck yet oh, shit. okay so youtube i wasn't really like doing it i was so inconsistent but now that i'm being consistent i see like the money coming in and it's not that much for this month i got like 3k and it was because i've been uploading like recently i uploaded two videos in one week and i feel like that really like helps you grow like the more consistent you are the more followers like everything you get everything once you're more consistent and i feel like that's a good point that you touch because i always tell everyone everyone that ever starts like social media i'm always telling them youtube youtube i yeah. i came up on youtube and i'm so thankful that i've almost been doing this shit for almost 10 years mm -hmm. right like i've been doing this shit for so long and i feel like because of youtube i've been able to stay afloat for so long because i feel like you you know tiktok obviously is a, such an amazing platform to get discovered but like it's so brand new that you don't know where yeah. it's gonna go so yeah. i always tell people like youtube is literally the place where you can show your personality show yourself and it lives on there forever so there's yeah. always people finding you like maybe from a video that you posted two years ago they're like oh my god why am i barely watching this mm -hmm. and yo sé que ahorita tus tres mil dólares se van a hacer diez mil veinte mil quince mil because it really is like a platform where the money becomes lucrative you know yeah. have you been doing this full time for a while now well for her it wasn't really youtube it was more tiktok, TikTok live yeah, TikTok, yeah. yeah but even then like i do feel like i i just don't know how to do this you know because it's just we don't have a manager or anything yeah. oh yeah so i feel like we just don't know what to do we don't know how to really reach out to companies to brands so that's like really like what i kind of struggle with but i have been getting good money obviously not like i'm not rich or anything but you know i i'm able to stay home with my daughter so yeah, that's the good thing. I have been doing this full time. And I tell her all the time, like she's undercharging people. And I'm like, we need manager. <laughs> no, you guys I'm really right, you do. do I'm going to yeah. tell my management team about y'all because in verdad que see, if you guys don't have management, don't. you guys will be getting fucked over. I feel like especially now with the new era of influencing, I feel like companies think, especially with TikTok, I feel yeah. like companies think that like all these TikTokers no saben nada, you know, les, les quieren mirar la cara de pendejos, but it's like, no, like you really need like you said like if you're undercharging mm -hmm. that's why the companies keep coming back because and they're like no like, estamos sacando yeah. y no nos está cobrando tanto and then like i said like i kind of accept every offer i get and mm -hmm. so i hate like i don't know i just hate seeing a sponsored post on my page because i'm like fuck like i should be posting actual content instead of like sponsored content and i just kind of like i just hate it you know like i hate but I feel like don't feel bad because at the end of the day, I mean, you guys are live all the time. You mm -hmm. guys are always producing content for free for yeah. your followers. And I don't feel like there's anything bad with getting your back. Was there ever people that doubted you maybe in the beginning were like, ay, ¿qué están haciendo? Pónganse yeah. a trabajar. Hagan algo que en verdad les va a sacar dinero. If so, who? My mom was really supportive. Like the whole YouTube thing. She actually, for the gift for the quince, yeah, she got us a camera, like a Canon. Oh, shit. Okay. I, I don't know what it is. Ca Canon Rebels t7 i i don't know but she got us our ca first ever camera and ever since then we've been filming with that camera so she's really supportive she always tells us like keep going keep going like it's worth something and you don't really hear that like with especially with mexican yeah. parents like they're like oh that's especially not with this career exactly. yeah they're like, like that's not a doing yeah like, that's not a job like, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, yeah but my mom like she's so supportive with that the only thing I actually remember people being like iffy about it was our middle school English teacher. Her name was Miss Severe. She was so like, she was like, this is not going to get you anywhere. Miss Severe would literally tell us like, you're not going to be shit basically. And yeah. we would always be like, okay. But after a while, we kind of blew up on YouTube and she would show her class our videos and be like, yeah, like don't listen to anybody. Like she yeah. switched up basically. Yeah, but she, I remember like, well, she kind of, it was more like a motivation type thing because mm -hmm. she was, she would tell us be like, once you make your first a thousand dollars, like then come talk to me about like it being a real job. So then like once that happened, we went up to her like, look, like we made our first a thousand, and she was like, oh fuck, like maybe you can actually do this for a job. So honestly, like I feel like she motivated us more than like yeah, 
put us down. But I, I feel like haters are motivators. <laughs> but yeah, it's like that was it. Like she was a hater, so it like motivated us to do more and prove her wrong, basically. So fuck the haters. <laughs> well, you. Mean- Ok, amigas, so ya quiero empezar a conocerlas un poquito más individually. Vamos a empezar contigo, Wendy. A los 18 años te embarazas. Y you no, know, te embarazas de tu niña Valentina. Yo yeah. quiero saber cómo pasó todo eso. Tell us the story of cómo te dices cuenta que estabas embarazada. I never really talked about like how I found out I was pregnant or anything, but basically um, my boyfriend at the time, he was gone for six months in the military. And when we, when he had came back like obviously i was like let's get into it like let's do it whatever and we didn't protect ourselves but at the same time like we didn't plan getting pregnant but that's like the stereotype with military men that they move fast and they yeah. want things they fast. want like marriage everything everything yeah everything. i really do hear that a lot like yeah. apenas entran y ya cuando salen yeah. te voy a comprar casa esto y todo eso yeah. para que los esperen no yeah. yeah so um yeah whatever we like got into it and we didn't protect ourselves but like we just didn't really like think it would actually happen so when i the minute like i felt a little bit of sick i was like fuck i'm pregnant like even if it was just like a headache or whatever i'd be like fuck i'm pregnant because it was just always in the back of my mind i did get really really sick like super sick i would literally be in bed all day it was it wasn't even like nausea it was just my head hurt Like, I just felt so weak. Like, I don't know if you ever seen Twilight, like, the pregnancy uh-huh. scene. Like, that's literally, like, how I looked, how I oh, felt. Shit. Yeah, and it kind of had gone to, like, two weeks and then three weeks. And I was like, fuck, like, maybe I am pregnant. So, right before um, my boyfriend at the time got off of work, I told him, hey, like, give me a pregnancy test. Like, we need to take one. And so, he got one. He came here. And I took it. And, like, we, were, we weren't even serious about it because we were like, oh, that's just going to be negative, like, It was like, oh, let's do something. Yeah, like, I just, like, I was, like, left it there. I was like, oh, like, we just kept talking. And then, the like, the three minutes have passed. We went. Wait, actually, it wasn't even three minutes. Like, I literally peed on it. I put it down. We talked. Like, two seconds after, I just looked at it to look at it. And that shit was positive. And I was like, <gasps> there's no way. And, like, I didn't really have, I didn't really think anything. I was just like, fuck, like. Like, you blacked like, my, out. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. my mind just went blank. I was like, oh. He was kind of like smiling and I was like, this is not funny. Like I got someone and I was like, this is not funny. Like I'm actually pregnant. Like there's a baby in here. And um, tell me why she left the wrapping in the trash can. I wasn't me. It's because I was too worried about being pregnant. Like I was more worried about that than some trash in the trash can. Yeah, that whole thing happened. And like, I don't know if I don't think I really talked about this, but we're pro-choice. And so, obviously, like, when you find out you're pregnant yeah. young, that's the first... Like, the that's first thing that like comes the first to your head, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, like, should I even, like, go through with this? Like, is this even, like, what I want to do with my life? So, obviously, like, that's the first thing that went through our head. We're like, is that what we want to do? And we kind of, like, decided on it because we were, like... I was 18, he was, like, 20. So, we were super young and we just didn't know what to do at the time. So, um, yeah, it was, like... Like, I called, like, a couple days after Planned Parenthood. I called. I made the appointment. Everything, like, was going... Like, everything was set. Yeah, Yeah, everything was set. And then um, me and my baby daddy were, like, kind of breaking up. That was more reason not to go through the pregnancy, you know? So we had everything set. And then the day came. He took me. I was already, like... They called me back there to the little room. I was, like... It was literally going to happen. And then the lady was, like, Oh, do you want to see, like, the ultrasound and i was like not really but then she showed she kind of showed me and at that moment i was like fuck like i cannot do this like even if we were pro-choice like like it just didn't that, feel that right. just didn't yeah, yeah. feel right for me to do it like i don't know i just felt super bad seeing the ultrasound so then i told him i was like wait like maybe i don't want to do it maybe like another time maybe next week like i'll make an appointment i just told him i don't want to do it and then We had left, and since we, me, me and my baby daddy were breaking up, he told me, he was like, like, oh, like, I know, like, we had planned to do this, but if you don't want to, if you don't feel ready, like, we can go through it with it, we can have the baby, we can, like, change, we can be better for each other, like, we can do this for the baby. So that was kind of, like, my... Like, my, the push? Like yeah, that the- was kind of, like, okay. Like, he thinks we can actually, like, um, work things through, and, you know, I, I like, I want to keep the baby, so I was like, okay, like... That was my decision. I was like, okay, I'm keeping the baby. And like, I, this is kind of like, 
I don't know, like, this is kind of bad, but, like, when I was pregnant, I would think about it. I'm like, fuck, like, did I even, like, is this even yeah. the what right decision? Yeah. 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 I was like, like, I fuck, like, I sh- maybe should have done it. Like, I shouldn't have stayed pregnant. I'm going to ruin my life. Like, it, it's just, like, it sounds really bad, but it's always in the back of yeah. your mind. Like, if that it's didn't... It's the hormones, too. Yeah. I mean, it's it's valid. Because I feel like you're not the only one that's ever thought like that. And you're not going to be the last. You yeah. know, it's it's super valid. Yeah. You know, estaba super chamaquita. Mm-hmm. You know, you were super young to where you're like, wait, I don't even know what I want to do for yeah. my life. Now you want to add a baby. Do you feel like, you know, ya después de que nace Valentina, how do you feel now? You know? Well, definitely, like, now that she's actually here, you know, I'm really happy, like, you know, I went through with that. I love her so much. She's literally, like, the best thing. And she's the reason, like, I am where I am. Because if I didn't have her, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So, like, I'm just, like, I love her so much. I'm glad. I didn't go through it, obviously. But sometimes there are moments where I'm thinking about what would have happened if I didn't. Or, like, how your life would have yeah, been. Yeah, how, how different. Know? And then I remember I did watch a movie. It was, like, it showed two ways, like, oh, her finding out she's pregnant or her not being pregnant. So it kind of showed, like, her life through two different, like, situations and like I just always think about like I don't know where I would be if I didn't you know pero lo bueno that you kept her you know porque Definitely, obviamente yeah. te vieron muy muy feliz so obviamente te das cuenta that you're gonna keep the baby who were the first people you told and were you scared of telling anyone were you like fuck no me van a yeah. regañar como pasó todo eso even after we had like decided we were not gonna go through the abortion um we still waited like like maybe like a month or two to tell anybody. Yeah. But let's not say that I the way I found out was I saw the obviously the trash the rapper and I was like what the fuck like I, like I guess it's like normal whatever. But then I didn't see the actual pregnancy test. I sent it to the group chat with me, my sister, and Wendy. I'm like who's pregnant? And Juana, my sister, was like, if they didn't leave the pregnancy test, obviously they're pregnant. So I like I'm like. And there's no pregnancy test, so I'm like, I text the shit, yeah. And I'm, I text Wendy, I'm like, are you pregnant? And she was like, yeah. And now, like, yeah. I guess right now, like, I love Valentina, and I'm like, she's a blessing. But at that time, I was like, you're too young, like, don't go through with it. Like, I kept telling me I'm dumb as fuck. Oh, I didn't say that, yeah. but I told her I was like, you're too young, like, don't go through with it. Like, you're so young, and you have the option, and like. We're obviously like yeah. in Colorado, like it's we can still do it. I'm like, you have the option, like you're so young, you have your whole life ahead of you. And I mean, like she said, like she kind of like when she was pregnant, she was like, damn, did I do the right decision? It's that's kind of what comes with being pregnant at such yeah. a young age. You like, you're like, what would my life be without the yeah. kid? And I don't have a kid, so I can't really talk about it. But yeah. I mean, obviously, I, I was like, yeah. Wendy's so young, she's my sister. Like I can't even like imagine what it would be like with a little baby. Like it was so yeah. different. And like, even even then, I feel like even if you're 30 years old, however old you are, pregnant, like you do always kind of think what your life would be like because mm-hmm. that does like that just takes up. A lot of, of your, like life. your whole life. It yeah, takes up your whole yeah. life. You know, obviamente, so tú fuiste la primerita que te hiciste cuenta de toda mm-hmm. la familia. How was it like when it came down to telling your parents, your mom? ¿Cómo lo tomó ella? Was she happy? Was she a little like, ay, ¿qué pasó aquí? No. ¿Cómo lo tomó tu mamá? Well, me and, me and my baby daddy, we knew my mom would get mad. So she was like one of the last people we had told. But when we did finally tell her, I told my baby dad, I was like, you tell her, like, I'm not telling her, like, this is your fault, like, I'm not going to tell her. I remember we were in the kitchen and, like, we really, like, we had planned to tell her that day. Um, my baby daddy was, like, he was too scared, like, he's just, like, a super, like, nervous person. So he didn't really know how to tell her, and I was like, this boy, like, I'm going to have to tell her. You're like, get so, out. Yeah, so I was like, I was like, oh, estoy embarazada. And then she was like, she was just like, oh, ¿qué van a hacer? Did este. you think it was a prank? Or no? no? I wasn't even there. I don't know the yeah, story. Yeah, no, she was like, ¿qué van a hacer? Este, están bien jóvenes. Um, y tienen, like, she just kept, like, saying stuff. And that kind of, like, hurt my feelings. So I was like, fuck, you're right. Like, I'm, like, way too young. Like, I you're like, even, ¿qué voy a hacer? I, <laughs> I was like, fuck. And then, like, that made me, like, really, like, sad. It was more like hormones type thing. Like I was just sad she was yelling at me and stuff. But I obviously I understand why she was mad. I was 18 years yeah. old, so it was understandable. But she did get super super mad. And then um, whatever we had gone to sleep mad. Oh, I got mad too because I was like, why are you like yelling at me? Yeah. We had gone to sleep mad. And the next morning when she was leaving to work, she came into my room and she like came to me. She was like, oh, like I'm sorry I yelled at you. Like and she was like, it's because Toya eres mi niña. Like um, sorry I yelled at you. And you know that kind of she's because she she's not a very she doesn't hold grudges. Yeah. 
So, like, obviously, the next morning, she apologized to me. And after that, we were kind of, like, good, you know? Like, she was able to be there for you in that journey. Yeah. Tito Novio, at the time, did you guys get back? Or did you guys, like, straight from the bat, were you guys, like, co-parenting? Yeah. Well, um, like, a lot had happened before we had found out we were pregnant. We were already, like, breaking up. And obviously, he said, oh, like, we'll try again. I'll do better for you. So, my dumb ass believed him. And I was like, oh, okay, like, he's like obviously i'm pregnant with his child he's gonna believe me i mean he's gonna change he's gonna change for me and i'm gonna believe him so we had gone back together and obviously like once you break up with someone that shit's over like yeah well sometimes it does work out when you try again but like especially if they're like problemas que no se pueden yeah arreglar. that's like yeah, way yeah. past getting like a little break that's like way past even trying again so we we told each other like we would try again and obviously like it didn't work out but you could you could tell like we just weren't there for each other we were just kind of there for the baby and when people do get pregnant they're like oh fuck we gotta stay together for the baby and like do all this for the baby and like pretend we love each other for the baby but at the same time like that was way that was way worse than just breaking up because yeah. that was worse like i was thinking too much about it i was I was just more worried, more worried about him loving me, I guess, than like being a mother, you know? But I feel like that's a very great way to think because, como dices tú, muchas mujeres se quedan con sus parejas que porque no quieren que la familia se quebre. But like if the relationship is toxic, yeah, like the only one that's going to suffer va a ser en este instante Valentina, you know? Yeah. So it's great that you made that decision. Obviamente, when did you make that decision? Was that recently? That It was actually pretty, well, it was like six months ago, but it seems pretty recent, you know? Like my Valentina, my daughter, she was about like three months. So it was like right after I had given birth and yeah she was still super young i was barely like healing from yeah. you know giving birth so it was just a really bad time i guess to go through all that what was the breaking point for you where you're like you know what hasta aquí llegó todo well it esto. wasn't even my decision it was his ah, yeah. like, he loved like, me yeah, i, I would have been happy me. there yeah. it was just like it was like a mutual thing kind of like we were both kind of like not in love with each other we were just there to be there and, and I never really liked him. Why you <laughs> Like, in the lives, like, he was always so rude to me for no reason. Like, even now, like, I understand that he's Valentina's dad, and, like, I guess I support it, but he was just always so rude for no reason. And maybe he's changed, but when he was living at our house, he was just so rude to me. And even, like, with me, like, I would be live, and he mm -hmm. was just never supportive. I never really felt like he was there for me. And, you know, it's very draining, like, having that person you think is going to be there for you. You think it's going to, like, support you. Like, do this, do this, do that. Like, it's very just... Especially when you have dreams, mm -hmm. you know? No, when yeah. you have, like, a vision for yourself and yeah. that person's not supporting you, then you're like, pues, pa que estoy aquí? Yeah. And so I, that's why I feel like it was kind of, like, a mutual thing. But when it did happen, obviously, I feel like people just want what they can't have, you know? Like, yeah. I was obviously like, oh, fuck, he doesn't want me, so I'm going to try, like... When he was, like, um, already leaving me, I was like, no, like, I was begging him, yeah. you know? But it was just because I didn't know any better. I was just like, oh, he's the father of my daughter. Like, I just want to be with him. But now, like, six months after, I feel like I'm completely over him. And like I said, you want what you don't have. So I feel like now he's the one who's like, oh, like... She's, Let's get back. Yeah, yeah. She, he's like, oh, like, nothing happened. Like, what do you mean? Like, we'll just get our family back. But I'm like, no like just it's just because i don't want him that's more of, it's more like of a validation thing like you just it's like, more of a chase no me querías yeah, y ahora no, no, no. que tú me quieres mm -hmm. I've moved on do you feel like I mean I see that a lot in your comments siempre tus girls mm -hmm. when I was live the other day I was like amigas que les pregunto que yeah. les pregunto a lot of your girls were like ay Alan pregúntale if she would ever get back with her baby daddy would you ever or is that something that you're like no I've moved well, on I'm good well sometimes obviously like I'm like like that's Valentina's dad Valentina would be way happier seeing us together than separated but, yeah, I've, like, completely moved on. I know it's easier to try with someone new than waste my time and try with someone I know won't work out in the end, you know? Like, I know if me and him try to get, I know same shit is going to happen. Like, it's just going to be a cycle. Yeah. How was it for you when it came down to, you know, leaving this relationship? Like, how did you cope with the loss of, you know, the relationship? Yeah, we broke up, like, three months after I have given birth, so I was still, like, postpartum postpartum you know and i feel like that made everything worse i just didn't feel connection with my daughter even more like with my with my baby daddy not being there i just didn't like 
I was more focused on other things. I was more sad. I was more mad than, you know, focused on being a mother. And that really did affect everything way more. Like, the first few months, he was kind of, like, mean, I like guess. Like, distant? He was, yeah, he was more distant. Like, he wouldn't really talk to me. He would just drop off Valentina. Or not, like, sometimes he wouldn't even pick her up when I would tell him to. So that was kind of, like, I would get super mad. It was just more, like, you kind of need to get used to co-parenting. It's something you need to learn to do, something you need to talk about. Like, you need to let go of your relationship and just focus on your, like, your, da daughter. your daughter. Yeah, yeah. so, it, like, I feel like the first few months we were just focused on each other more than focused on Valentina. So, um, it was just, it's been recently where we've, you know, we've kind of been good. We've been like, oh, you take Valentina this day. Like, you, I take her this day. You buy her this. I buy her that. Like, that's more, it's been way better, yeah. Now that you guys are co-parenting, do you feel like you're at a place where you're like, you know what? Like, I like this. Like, él se está portando bien, tú también te portas bien. The baby's good. How does that feel? Yeah, I was thinking about it and I was like, if we get back together, again, this sounds bad, but, you know, I like the breaks I get. I yeah. like. The, he takes her weekends, so I like, you know, enjoying my weekends, you know. And then I feel like if we got back together, it would just be the same draining, like, feeling like, does he love me? Does he not? Is he doing this because he's doing, like, he's cheating? Like, it's just super draining being in a relationship like that. So, I don't know. I just feel more free, more happy being out of that relationship. What's a piece of advice you can give to maybe those parents that are maybe going through co-parenting and maybe are in a place where they're like, taking everything personal instead of taking everything for what it is aka you know their daughter their son what's a piece of advice that you can tell them and be like you know what like it's not about y'all mm -hmm. it's about you know the baby what's something you can tell to those that are struggling i guess like the only thing i can say is just worry about the baby it's not really about the relationship you guys had it's not about the relationship you guys like could have had it's just about the baby even if things ended bad the baby is still your guys yeah yeah, so you both, like, it's both of your guys' situation, you know? Not only one parent needs to worry about the baby or vice versa, you know? And I feel like it's very important to, like you said, put those feelings to the side and worry about what really matters because, like, in 10 years... You guys are both going to be moved on, but who left with all that trauma? You know, your the baby. baby. Yeah. So, está bien que tú estés en ese momento en tu vida where you're like, you know what? Like, enough of me, my feelings. Now we got to worry about my daughter. So, ya ahorita cuando te miro on social media, I feel like you're at a place where te miro muy feliz con tu bebé. Te miro muy como disfrutando de la vida. How do you feel like motherhood has changed you? When I was pregnant, I didn't really think it changed me that much. I thought it was just going to be like, oh, like a baby, you know? But it definitely, like, I feel like people don't realize how much it affects you. Like, that's literally, like, you don't even... This is this sounds bad to say, but you really don't even have life anymore. Like, that's yeah. your life. And I feel like it affects more, like, mothers than fathers. Because when you're a mom, that's more... Like, you're more attentive. Yeah. Like, el papá, pues, se va y se va a tomar su chela. Y ya, ya el problema con la yeah. mamá, ya. Yeah. But, yeah, like, it definitely, like, I feel like I don't even have, like, time for myself. I feel like I can't have my own hobbies or like whatever it is, I just feel like she's my whole life. And that's what being a mother is, you know? But you being a mother isn't like your whole life is over. You can still enjoy your life yeah. as a mother. Yeah. But and I feel like you're doing that yeah. just amazing, you yeah. know? At the same time, like people see one thing and they're like, oh, she's like, she doesn't take care of her baby. Or, they, that's see, what, like, or they see the dad taking care of the baby. They're like, oh, they're, the dad does everything or vice versa. They see the mom. They're like, it's just like parenting is super hard especially with the criticism you can like get online. from it yes, lo que yo and, platicar de, mm -hmm. you know how do you deal with the mommy shaming online yeah. because now that you have a platform like it almost feels like girl like is it me raising or are y'all raising my child like yeah. how do you deal with the mommy shaming well i feel like the the thing i get most hate on is that I, like i don't take care of valentina or like i'm always on live but i remember when i was pregnant i would always hear it like takes a village to raise a, a kid a baby, yeah, yeah. a baby yeah so like People hate when the village does help, you know, like obviously I get help and why am I not going to take it? And especially if doing social media like that is like my job. Yeah. And it's like if I were to go to work nine to five, obviously, like I'm very fortunate to be able to stay home and that's my job. But, you know, like at the same time, I do kind of need to separate that from, you know, what I do. I feel like what you said right there, I feel like mucha gente can relate. And I feel like a lot of people forget that your mom... Mm -hmm. 
Or you, if you're a mom, you leave your child alone for your eight hours. You go yeah. to work, and then there's a chamaco con la suegra, con tu mamá. And it's almost it's the, the same, same thing. thing. Like, yeah. you gotta go get your money. You gotta go yeah. get your bag. And like, if you said, like, if the village wants to help, let the fucking village yeah. help. You know, uh-huh. obviamente tú como hermana, Evelyn, how do you feel when, you know, you see your sister get, you know, mommy shamed cuando tú miras en verdad cómo son las cosas behind the scenes? I feel like as a mom, like on social media, especially like, more than 10k viewers on live it's so different having so many people tell her be a mom be a mom where's your kid where's your kid when honestly she's only on live for max two hours like yeah. out of her whole day it's just i feel like it's unfair but that's what comes with being on social media you get mom shame body shame anything whatever it is yeah even if i wasn't mother like i would get hate for something like they just don't mm-hmm. pay you actuan como si yeah. 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 literally so at the end of the day like i know it that's just part of it but it does like get to me sometimes like when I'm just thinking about it, I'm like, fuck, like, am I even doing enough for Valentina? Like, am I being there for her? Like, does she need me more than I'm with her? Like, it does kind of make you think about it. It's and the mom guilt. Yeah. yeah, mom guilt for sure. And I feel like it's always going to be there. Pero mientras que tú sepas y lo tengas claro en tu mente that you're doing everything possible to give the life that she deserves, mm-hmm. eso todo lo que importa, ¿verdad? Yeah. So now moving on to Evelyn. Yo quiero platicar un poquito con ella de su historia. Ah, uh, Wendy's like, okay, ya. Yeah, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> You're like, okay. So yo quiero platicar un poquito contigo, Evelyn. I got a lot of messages. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like you've been very vocal about your past past, you know, abusive relationships. Mm-hmm. Y si me preguntaron muchas de sus seguidoras que querían que tú hablaras un poquito más del tema. Just, you know, because I feel like when people talk about things que les han pasado, siento como que hay mucha gente que nos miran en casa that can relate to and it yeah. can serve kind of like inspiration to them. Tú has contado in the past that you've been in abusive, you know, toxic relationships. Cuéntanos un poquito más de eso and how it's changed your outlook in life. Well, it's been about, I think, a year or two years that I've been in a toxic relationship and honestly i can say i'm so glad i'm out of it it's just i feel like it's so hard when you're in that situation to like get out of it and a lot of people say oh i went back three times four times and honestly people criticize you for going back but i understand it like it's just you feel like you have no other choice yeah and i feel like being in that type of relationship it was so toxic abusive and it's it was going on for three years so it's like i was used to it and that's all i ever knew i got in that relationship when i was freshman year so what 15 14 yeah Yeah, yeah. 15 years old i ended it when i was a senior in high school my whole high school experience was with that person it was just like such a horrible experience i lost so many friends because of him and after high school honestly it just got way worse like it just got abusive and honestly like i don't want to say like he was the only abusive one like i admit i was pretty abusive with him and that's like how it started but it's hard to get out of it and i'm just so glad i did when i did and now i'm in a happy relationship but it, it does affect future relationships because yeah. you're like you're scared you're it's just in the back of your mind yeah. like what if he reacts this way what if he hits me it's just like it's hard to deal with that you know you say it, it was abusive do you mean it verbally physically or like everything everything uh, at first wait i don't want to cry but at first it was like verb oh my god no, it's <laughs> okay, not, don't laugh. <laughs> at first it was like verbally abusive and that's kind of what like I tell people to not I tell people not to let their like boyfriend talk to him a certain way because it starts that way but then after a while it starts with them hitting things and you're like okay well like if he hits me I'm gonna leave and then once he hits you you're like okay like I'm gonna leave and then you're like okay I'm done with you but then he comes back he knows how to get you back so he's like oh no I'm so sorry the second time same thing I'm so sorry and you're like okay he'll change he'll change and um, I heard that it takes like seven times for people to like actually leave. And for me, it took like so many times. And you hear people say like, you're so you're so fucking stupid. Like, why would you stay? Why would you do that? But it's like, that's all you know. It's just comfort. And especially like being three years in that relationship. It's like, that's all I ever knew. And I feel like I had enough time to like heal. And now I know better. And sometimes like in my current relationship, like I have a boyfriend now. In my current relationship, sometimes I feel bad because like I'm going to talk. Oh. I'm kind of... No, you're good. I'm kind of talk... Oh, wait, hold on, sorry. There's napkins in Kira Saira, amiga. You're doing good. Okay, I'm kind of toxic towards my boyfriend, and I feel like he does not deserve that, but I feel like I, like... That's all I've... That's all I've ever known, so I feel like me being the way I am is normal, but sometimes I realize I'm like, that's not the way it should be. So sometimes, like, I yell at him, and I'm like you had no reason to do that or like I'm so mean to him and I'm like damn like 
there was really no reason to do that but i i feel like my boyfriend right now he's so patient with me and he understands like it's all i've ever been through so he's really patient he's helped me a lot through that do you feel like it's been hard for you to like not let your past traumas kind of you know come with you when it comes to your future relationships that's kind of what like i've been trying to learn like even now like i'm still like so toxic but i like and people glorify glow what is it they glor uh, glorify. glorify glorify they glorify toxic relationships and it's like it's not like cute like at all like yeah. being in an abusive toxic relationship it's so like draining it's hard like you feel like you have no other person but him and i i hate when people glorify toxic relationships because it's never cute like it's, it's not it's cute, not yeah. cute to be and I like, feel like that we see it now in the generation of like i thought yeah, like, like, no. it's like there's a lot of pain that goes behind when you really do experience you know a relationship like that nos cuentas que empezó contigo you know los maltratos verbales you know the oh you bitch or whatever it was like verbally then it moves on you know to hitting something which is a way of like easing into like exactly. the actual physical what was the moment for you where you realized that the relationship had turned toxic it was literally like a month into us being together i oh, think he shit. cheated on me so it was like that but i was young and he was a lot older so i would like just forgave him he was i think 18 at the time i was 15 so i was like he knows he knows his stuff so i was like i'm it's okay like cheat on me again <laughs> no but like i i forgave him and i was like oh like it was just a one-time thing and then after that like obviously it was good and then um he starts being mean to me and i'm like oh it's okay like at least he's not cheating and then after that it's him hitting things and going crazy and i'm like oh it's okay at least and, he's not hitting me yeah, yeah and then once he starts hitting you you're like oh i'm done but then he knows how to get to you and then you're like oh it's okay and then he hits you again and you're like okay and then like you eventually get tired of it and obviously like it's hard like in that moment it's hard for people to be like oh just leave but it's not just leaving it's it almost feels like you got to leave your whole life, you exactly. know, because I feel like especially being so young, you know, you were 15, you were probably even manipulated into mm -hmm. feeling like everything that was happening was the way you should be getting treated in a relationship. And it just gets, you know, draining because like you start feeling like, oh, is this how I should be treated? Is this what I deserve? And at the end of the day, it's like, no, you deserve better. You know, nos cuentas que estuvieron juntos tres años um, and you realize that it was toxic in the first month. What was for you like the last straw to where you're like you know what i'm gonna put myself first y aquí cabo todo esto. um a lot of people say that when you're in a relationship so long you mentally check out of the relationship and i honestly have been checked out of that relationship like two years in so like a whole year i was just checked out and like he gave me the ick like everything he did was just so icky and it just came to a point i was like like i just want him to mess up so i could leave and the like abusive part was still happening but it was just so normal to me like i was like oh he hit me oh i hit him and like some people say like i'm playing the victim but i openly admit that i was really like toxic to him and abusive and i i've changed like i've done my own like healing healing and i've i can say i've changed but it was just like it was just normal like that to me is so normal and even now that i'm in a healthy relationship sometimes like when he's so nice to me and like so kind and so patient i think to myself i'm like am i even like worthy of this yeah. like because all i've ever known and you are you are just know you're worthy of that and you're worthy of everything great that's coming to you you know a veces you have to go i mean it happens and you have to go through those hard times to really put in perspective that you deserve better nos platicas you know de eso do you feel like when it finally happened when you finally left was it hard for you to move on and really accept what was really going on um well we like officially ended things because he had cheated on me and i was like okay i'm done so after he had cheated on me i was like obviously sad and obviously when you're in a toxic relationship you're like you think to yourself oh we're gonna get back together in a, in a day yeah. so that's what i thought i was like oh we're good and after he had cheated on me he like stopped caring and i was like begging for him. i was like please 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 like i want you like whatever so that had happened and well he didn't want me at all and i was like whatever so i stopped caring for him like i'm Completely, done like yeah. i stopped begging him and obviously like when they said you want what you can't have so when i stopped caring he started like coming like, back like, to oh, me shit. yes yeah, exactly yeah. and i always tell like girls like 
if you want a man, act like you don't. Like, he will chase you. Like Because men like to chase. Yeah. yeah, men love chasing. So, yeah, so he would, like, chase me and stuff. And I would obviously go out, do my own thing. And he would just be so crazy. Like, like it was to a point where, like, people would tell me to get a restraining order. Oh, shit. Because there was this one time. Well, this was, like, recent. Like, six months ago, he was still, like, crazy yeah oh, he was shit. so in my life he was and so were you already with your current boyfriend at the time well we were a sneak link so we were still like seeing each other but it was nothing serious so we would see each other it was this one night i was like getting ready to see him it was like one in the morning and i'm just like calling him i'm like hey like what are you doing and i hear evelyn and it's through my window <gasps> And my window's like always, always open. And I look and like, obviously it's night. So I can't see shit. I'm like, what the fuck? And I kind of know it's my ex. So I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? So like, I was like, I know, like, oh, no. oh, oh, and like, I, like I like, I told um, my current boyfriend, I'm like, okay, bye. So like, we're done with like the call. And I, he's like, Evelyn, Evelyn, come outside, come outside. And I'm like, no, like, I don't want to go outside. Like, just leave. Like, you're crazy. And he was drunk. So he like literally drove drunk to my oh, house. Shit. Like it was crazy. And I was like, no, like I don't want anything to do with you. Just leave me alone. Like I'm happy without you. And he was like, come outside and I'll leave. I go outside. They get you like that. Exactly. They they just manipulate like, come, you. Let's just yeah, talk and then yeah. I'll leave if you don't want me anymore. Yeah. Exactly. And I went outside and he starts crying to me. He's like, I love you so much. And I'm like, you know, the animal. It's just like Yeah. It's, it's just, like the same excuse over and yeah, over and again. Yeah, and I'm like, at that point, like I'm obviously like I'm doing my own thing. I'm over it. Like, I've been done. So I tell him, like, just leave. Like, basically, like, there's no point in you being here. He's like, okay, hug me and I'll leave. I hug him. He's like, bye, whatever. He leaves. And I'm like, okay. Like, I'm going to go see Kevin. So I started driving to Kevin, my current boyfriend, Kevin. Um, I started driving to him and I'm driving. And behind me is just headlights, like, kissing my ass. Like, following you. Following me. And it's literally right outside my house. He's following me. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I try to speed up. But he's obviously catching, like, catching up. And he's drunk. So, like, you're yeah, drunk. Exactly. You're like, so, fuck. No me voy a pegar. So I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I don't know what to do at that point. I pull over. And he comes to my window, starts knocking, like, banging on the door. And I'm, like, obviously, like, crying. I'm like, just, like, leave. Like, what the fuck? And... Well, I'm just scared at that point. And well, because you never. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, I feel like at this point, you're like, I've already gone through the worst. Now he, especially when I feel like you're like done, done. You don't really know what they're capable of doing until that moment. Even my mom, like she would be scared. Like she would tell me, don't talk to him anymore. Like you don't know what he's capable of. Like he's crazy. He would literally text my mom, be like, tell Evid, um that I'm sorry. Tell her to come outside. Like he, and would, then, like, he got the whole family involved. Yeah. And then you like. You always hear stories of, like, an ex-boyfriend, a boyfriend, like, doing so much shit to, you know, their, their, their girlfriend per, or yeah. ex. So, that's, like, all that's always in the back of your mind. Like, is he capable of doing what other people do? Yeah. So, especially, like, he's banging on my door. I'm, like, what is he capable of doing at that moment? He's drunk. He's mad. Like, I don't know. So, I don't open my window until, like, he keeps doing it. And I, I, I roll down the window. I'm on my phone. I tell him, I'm going to call your friend i'm gonna tell him like you're embarrassing yourself you're here like because they went out to yeah, drink yeah. i guess i don't know like come get your homie yeah like, i'm yeah. like come get him like what is he doing i call him he doesn't answer but like it's ringing so obviously my ex is like fuck like that's embarrassing yeah. so he leaves and i'm like what the fuck like i just drive to kevin but i don't even tell kevin at this point because like I, like i'm done like you're with just him. getting to know him you also don't exactly. want to scare him yeah off. Yeah. yeah but yeah. there's been instances with uh my boyfriend kevin where me and kevin would just be friends and i would go over to kevin's house and my ex would pull up and knock on his door it was cr- like scary. it's a crazy situation yeah. and you could say like i had a fall because i would still like talk to him and stuff but it's hard to let go of that type of stuff like it's hard i feel like it, it takes a while mm-hmm. you know i know a lot of girls too that have been in a lot of toxic relationships y me ha tocado vivir esas experiencias con ellas. and like you said it's so easy than it is done mm-hmm. like it's so easy for someone to be like hi déjalo like mm-hmm. no but like when you're in that situation like only you know and like you said, you have this big attachment to him. Did your family know that he was physical with you? Or would you always kind of hide that para que no se mirara mal él? Um, with my mom, she never knew. Like, I would tell him he's crazy, but I would never tell him really what he did. Wendy? Did you ever, like, suspect I don't think, or knew? No, I don't think so. I mean, I thought he was, like, super nice. and Well, because they- 
he would try to get to her like send her gifts for her birthday like yeah. do it so they like, could what, all be on his side when they had already broken up he would like he gave me like a Dunkin gift card he like gave me like flat or like, oh, so it, it make flat it look like you were the like, like the crazy yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and Loki like obviously like I didn't see their own like fights, their fights I, didn't, yeah. I didn't see like the stuff behind the scenes so I kind of like oh, I felt bad for him I was like yeah. oh he's being super nice when like, they would always be like oh like don't be so mean to him but like I didn't they know. never know what goes yeah. Oh. And I feel like that's super normal, you know, we're in an age where like, like, a veces decimos mucho, like, no le digas a todos tus problemas, porque luego if you get back with them, like, you look dumb. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, like, we end up hiding everything that really is going to protect the person we think loves us. Yeah. But, you know, it's great that you're out of that, you know, relationship. Estoy muy feliz that, you know, that you're in a healthier relationship now. What advice can you give to those that are currently going through that, that maybe it might be their seventh, eighth, ten time going back, and they almost feel like, no, like, nothing better awaits me que es algo que tú les puedes decir para que ellas ellas o ellos sepan de que hay una vida you know after that person um honestly all i can say is that if you want to go back like i support it nobody else is going to support you only you are you know and i would always get told don't go back to him don't go back to him and nobody would support me i would just be by myself and that's what made me lose lots of friendships so honestly like if you go back you know what you're worth and people say that how oh, fuck what is it that you get the love you think you deserve so if that's what you think you deserve like like I'll, i can't tell you anything it's all up to you and you'll eventually realize that this isn't for me yeah, and like, it just takes a long time a very long time to realize you're worth way more honestly now that i'm in a way healthier relationship like it gets better like it's not all that and it's not worth it it's literally not worth it and i feel like that's something that you touch that's really like good because like a lot of women they grow up with not having that love maybe mm -hmm. it comes it stems from you guys not having your dad you yeah. know in your guys's life where like you guys never really saw how you nice. know your dad treated your yeah. mom or like you guys never saw you know the respect the love and maybe that's why for a long time you thought that that's how you were supposed to be treated nos cuentas ahorita que you know you get the love you think you deserve what was the moment for you where you're like this is not the love i deserve i deserve more have you had that you know realization in you i was healed from that relationship but i didn't realize i deserve more until like i got with my boyfriend and the way he treats me i'm like this is what i deserve and that's what everybody else deserves is just love and patience but yeah and even with her like her baby daddy was not patient at all no, yeah and like i'm kind of like gonna piggyback off that like i always like went for ugly guys i went for like broke guys like i just never knew what i kind of needed in my life and now like i'm kind of learning like oh like i am pretty like you know i kind of deserve somebody who kind of like i have a lot to offer no yeah, yeah like yeah. i i can get the man i deserve you know and i never really realized that until recently i started talking to more people who like are better looking have so more she's a hoe ah. <laughs> but i think you kind of like you need to go through that no, in your yeah. life you need and to go through a whole phase to know what you want and i feel like that's good that she's talking to a lot of people because Honestly, like to I find know. the you support whole I support. I it. support it too. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. sometimes you gotta have no, your yeah. options yeah. because a veces uno te enseña lo que quiere enseñarte just in the beginning and yeah, then like, guys on. way y luego it goes yeah. downhill. So it's good that you have your options open. It's good that you're giving yourself that chance to meet someone because a la mejor así encuentras a alguien que en verdad te trate bien y te haga yeah. sentir todo lo que tú estás buscando. Mm -hmm. You know, you both going through you know toxic relationships or just relationships that didn't work out what's something that of all out of all of that what's something that you guys have learned about yourselves i feel like i just learned that i'm worth way more and just i deserve way better than i get and i feel like just to love yourself that's all that matters because when you're in a toxic relationship you have nobody but basically him and yourself so it's just good to learn that you have yourself and that's all you need just yeah. yourself and that's what like i kind of struggle with is i don't know how to be by myself so i kind of always feel like i need to talk to somebody i feel like i always need to hang out with somebody 
to kind of feel you know like validated like love or yeah. validated yeah but yeah. that's what you have to learn just be by yourself or like, but sometimes it's boring like no, yeah, 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 yeah. that's what we gotta do yeah. but sometimes i don't want to do <laughs> no, that yeah. oh, that's, yeah. funny. that's crazy but like i feel like you guys are still young you know you no, guys yeah. are 20 years old you guys have a long way to go so espero que pronto agarremos la noticia que pues wendy ande con alguien que en verdad si valga la pena going back to evelyn a little bit ya rapidito you know nos platicas de que perdiste muchas amistades how are your friendships now basically me and wendy don't really have any friends even in high school well i was by myself throughout my whole senior year i had no friends i went to prom by myself <laughs> i was eating canes in the parking lot by myself but because i had no friends and honestly i feel like it's better that way just because you get to learn a lot about yourself you get to you get to learn how to be by yourself and that's like the most important thing just being by yourself so we really had no friends and i lost my friends because of the toxic relationship but i mean those aren't really friends if they're willing to leave you because like you're going to it, it does get tiring like being the friend that keeps telling them like don't do this don't do this don't, yeah. do, this, don't do this so i guess it gets tiring so i understand why they stopped being my friend but they weren't really my friends if they're like willing to leave me that fast mm -hmm. Do you guys feel like now that you guys have a platform, do you guys feel like it's harder to make genuine friends because you guys might feel like they're not really wanting to be your friends for who you are, but more because of what you can give yeah. online? Uh, I feel like even before like all the TikTok stuff, it's just super hard trusting anyone. Like even if I don't have anything, like being able to trust someone is so hard because like I have gone through friendships where like they just it's just so crazy you literally cannot it sounds so bad to say but you cannot trust anybody no like, one and you really can't trust anybody but yourself so that's why i like kind of staying to myself even if i say everything on live it's good to have some things to yourself so i don't know i think it's better to stay by yourself than let everybody know everything especially friends because you really can't trust anybody and There's been times where we trust people with our whole freaking lives and they they just turn out yeah. to be fake. Over, yeah. yeah, and obviously, like, maybe we one day there is somebody out there who, you know, can be our friend or whatever it is. But, you but know, we, we, we always know, like, what to limits, look out the for. Yeah, we know yeah. what to look out for. Yeah. We know, like, we know the red flags. What now. are the red flags? Yo quiero saber yeah. las. Ah. Like... When I it comes to friendships, yeah. With friendships, I feel like just being too too nice like that sounds Fake. bad but like you're just like oh like i like your hair oh i like your butt like oh you, i want to eat your ass. like they like, kiss ass they're just so like i guess like like praising like obnoxious yeah. it's yeah. like yeah, what like, do you mean you like my ass no me bañado yeah, ah, like, like, they, 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 yeah like they like just they just like over compliment you like obviously yeah. like sometimes you want to hear oh you look good you look this but it's good for people to be honest and a lot of people like come at me for it because i'm like oh That does not look good on Wendy. And they're like, oh my God, you're such a hater, 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 hater. I'm like, I'm being honest. Like, yeah. that's what you want. You don't want people to lie to you. Because if your makeup looks bad, you're like, oh my God, you look so good. And then next thing you know, like, she realizes, damn, I look bad. You know? Yeah, but I feel like with friendships, that's like one of the biggest the red ones. flags. Yeah, well, at least like with what happened in my past friendship, like, that's one thing, like, I kind of look out for, like, I just don't want to hear, like, fake compliments, I guess. Do you yeah. guys get a lot of envidia being girls? Like, is that something that you guys are like, fuck, there's a lot of girls that, like, approach us and they just give me off this vibe that they're jealous. Yeah. Or, yeah. Does that happen? Well, I've had a friend that just, well, I thought she was cool with us. She was, like, friends with us. And she would always, like, be so nice to Wendy. And I thought she was my friend, but deep down she was, like, a hater. Like, hate she it, wanted yeah. to, like, ruin Wendy's 100K. Yeah. She was like, how do I sabotage her 100K? Yeah. When I had hit 100K, it was, like, her friend. So it, it was wasn't even friend. involved in yeah, it. Yeah, I was yeah. just, like, dragged along. But um, it was her friend. She she had said, oh, Wendy hit 100K. I want to sabotage her. Yeah, and, like, that's... She said that online? No, no, no. 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 Wait. Uh, I went through her phone. Oh, my... <laughs> Uh, but it's because tell him yeah it's because um she like was super drunk and she was giving me her phone to like text people obviously and i was like a little being tipsy a so i was like i was being a chismosa so i was like let me search up my name i search up my name like i don't really say anything i search up wendy's name i don't know why but i search up wendy's name and like literally all these messages, combos messages 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 her hating like crazy and yeah. obviously like we're not supposed to go through her phone but like we thought we were her friend you know like 
well, or we thought we she was our friend. Yeah. We trusted her with everything. Like we would tell her stuff. We like we just never expected that from her. So I'm glad she did. Were you hurt her. because most of the hate was towards you? I guess I was just like more mad because I wasn't her friend, you know. But I did tell her stuff. She was Eva's friend, you and know. Every time we would all three of us hang out, she would literally kiss Wendy's ass, That's and I would tell her about, all the yeah. time. I'm like you're being way too nice like she's never that nice to me and i'm like why are you being so nice to wendy but now i get it and it's so crazy because i genuinely like she seems so genuine like she seems so nice and it's my fault for kind of like falling into that yeah. but exactly you can't trust it you yeah but like it. that was just super shocking to me because i was like oh like i thought like i thought the bitch me. loved me yeah. Yeah. I know. I was like, uh, like i thought i was god to yeah. her because <laughs> she would make you feel like it that's yeah. crazy did you guys fight her I know, honey. Oh, I we can. Know, I can. I let me know. Boxing yeah, match coming soon. Yeah, that was super recent. So I feel like kind of we're like kind of past yeah. all that. You know, if sh she's older than us, so the fact yeah. that you know she's the problem. You know, she's the problem. We we're not the problem. That, you know, we were just her friend, and she wanted to do all that, so it's fine. But obviously, like making friends now, like you never know. But yeah. we're kind of keeping our distance yes. from making friends. But. I mean, we love everybody. And now, yeah. And now after like that happened, we kind of like have like our yeah. We keep dis our, yeah. we keep our distance from people. Not make sure not to say too much because you Cause never I know. I feel like people, like I said, people are taking tabs all the time. Yeah. You know, más están viendo en qué la cagas o en qué estás diciendo mal, just to like get that to like hate. You yeah. know what I mean? T pages as well. Like they watch every second of the live and they make like they wait till they find something wrong. They're like. Oh my God, Winnie Ortiz said this and this and this. Like recently, her baby daddy was at our house. Obviously, oh, I saw that one. Yeah. Where, like, where you even showed him? Because they're yeah, like, why yeah, is she ignoring? Yeah, I did yeah. see that TikTok. Yeah, they were obviously co-parenting, like being with Valentina. But they made it seem like, oh my gosh, she's they're back, back together. together. Oh my God, like, like it was just like a very like weird thing to see, you know. But you know, that's again with co-parenting, we're but, doing better now. We're more like we don't hate each other and like that's always good in co-parenting but honestly like all that is beneficial for us because it blows up and yeah. it, she gets more followers that way well that's literally how i've been seeing you guys all over exactly. my for you page like i'll see comments and they'll be like oh my god what's their at? i want to follow them so i feel like t pages keep making the videos keep going, I, keep that's going. crazy so ya para terminar ya vamos a terminar you guys we're just gonna touch three more topics okay. the last one of those last ones que quiero platicar i've seen you guys always joke around you know getting a bbl getting surgeries <laughs> but de tanta pinche broma ya me la estoy creyendo que es broma do you guys eventually want to get anything done whether it's a BBL whether it's lip injections que se quieren hacer ustedes en un futuro well on it, like if I ever like I'm fortunate enough to spend that much money on it I feel like I will but Wendy's already gotten lip filler so oh, yeah. she half fake already, or she like one third fake yeah <laughs> like I already got lip filler and like if I'm ever fortunate enough to do that and spend that much money on it, I will. I just, you know, it's very scary, like seeing all these people get botched and whatever it is. Like it's super scary, but I know if you have the money to, like, you might as well just spend it. And if that's what you want, ask them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I feel like online people have this like. They get crazy when it comes to surgery. And I'm like, wait, ¿es tu cuerpo o el mío? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I feel like they get so defensive. And it's like, mientras que no te diga que te voy a operar a ti. Yeah, ah, like, like, it's not your problem. Like, the thing is, what yeah. about you, Evelyn? ¿Tú quieres hacerte algo no? I won't be real. Oh, and really? I won't, but I'm kidding. I, I mean, right now, like, I'm so scared of, like, surgery and stuff. So right now, I would say no. But because I don't have the money. But obviously, if the money were to come and I have enough to spend it on BBL, I'm getting BBL. Yeah, like, you guys will see me. I, I, I know, YouTube chat me. comes in. Yeah. I yeah. Ver, like, you guys, her next vlog by seed. I got a BBL. That would be iconic. <laughs> that would I, be. I can see it. You know what I mean? Even though I'm all for surgery, guys. Yeah. Like, I love surgery. I feel like the people that talk shit are usually the people that can't afford it. Yeah. yeah. Because I've gotten a lot of people, even friends around me, that they're like, oh my God, I would never. And then I'll but be like, ¿Y si te la pago? Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. I'm down. like, no, que no. Yeah. 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 So, ya para terminar, una cosa que también quiero platicar de Wendy hemos visto también últimamente que han estado coqueteando con Huelito what's all that about amiga en verdad es en serio are you, I, I yeah. think you guys are meeting up no well we were I'm not too sure if we still are but like that whole thing it was kind of funny at first you know a little joke like we would we would go live like we've gone live like six months ago together like it's been kind of like frequent but it's just been recently where Shadi Bay like kind of got mad at me I, I saw. Yeah, and then, um, like, honestly, like, I kind of took everything as a joke. You know, it's just kind of, like, funny. But seeing it from, like, her twin's perspective, 
Or is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, seeing it as her twin, like, it's all jokes. Like, I know damn well when they would not get with Ulito. You wouldn't? Well, yeah, man. I, I mean, you? No, I think he, like, I do think he's cute. Like, yeah. I see him and I genuinely but, think he's cute, but, um, and then he acts way different on TikTok. Like, when I see his TikToks, it's way different than when he calls me. Are you saying he's annoying on TikTok? That's what I'm saying. Ah, <laughs> she's like, like, that's exactly yeah, what I said. Yeah, but like on TikTok, he's way different than he is like, in, like I guess like in, on the phone. But or, that's anybody. Like yeah. obviously yeah. like we're like more calm. Yeah. Outside. So obviously like his TikTok persona, that's like way different than what I'm looking for. But maybe like his real life persona so yeah. you guys are talking like none of my sister through tiktok well, here, like, and there, yeah, here and there we would talk but i'm not sure like i've seen a lot of the comments too like Pregúntale que si se el yeah. baby daddy has he ever brought it oh. up well my baby daddy really like he hasn't said it i'm sure he does see it because he like he's always on tiktok but um like i'm sure it does kind of hurt him but fuck it. just kidding I like, like he up. okay question for wendy what would you feel like if it was roles reversed Ooh. Well, I mean, if I fucked up, that's on oh, me, guess, you know? Yeah. Like, I guess I wouldn't care if he's doing better, I guess. But you would but. feel some type of, like, hatred or, like, jealousy or no? Yeah. But, yeah, with Bolito, I like, I'm not sure. I'm sure, like, if we do hang out in person, I'll be able to see, like, the vibes and, Stay you know, tuned for that. Are you guys hanging out? I, I heard, like, it's even um, a contar, no? Well, he's getting here tomorrow night and I leave tomorrow night. But I might stay another day, yeah. Ooh, so him. si Just pasa, ya lo vieron. Yeah. A ver, si pasa, ya vieron todo yeah. eso. You know, nos platicas un poquito de lo que pasó con Shadi Bay. Is there anything maybe, you know, maybe she might not know that you were joking or... No, yeah. Oh, she knows? No, yeah, I texted her yesterday, I think it was. I was just saying, like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I know... It seemed like I did this and that. Like, I was just apologizing to her. So I hope she, like, knows. Espero que sí. You know, yeah. yo conozco a Shadi. I've met her. Cuando yo me tocó conocerla, I've always thought she no. was super, she super does, sweet. You know, we do love we, her. We love Shadi. Like, we literally, it. like, I don't know. I, she's just so funny. You guys are big fans, no? No, we're yeah. big fans. Yeah. Why, yeah. <laughs> like, we just love watching her. She's so funny. And she does seem super nice. Yeah. So I hope yeah. one day. And we... I was, well, because uh, they were planning on meeting up before any of that happened. So honestly, like, third wheeling but i thought like i was excited i was like i'm gonna be there i'm gonna meet shawty babe but obviously that happened so i'm like you're like obviously we're not meeting her no yeah, more no, ah, let me hey, la trip round two round yes. two yes. but i do hope like um she knows like we do love her and i hope maybe one day we can meet please seeing how far you guys have made it mm -hmm. what's something that you guys can now look back and tell Minnie, evelyn and wendy algo que ustedes a la mejor de chiquitas hubieran gustado que les hubieran dicho well, I think more like like a year ago when we had started TikTok Live, like we would go live every day and sometimes it kind of seemed like we wouldn't really go anywhere, you know? Like, But it was would, always just for fun. Yeah, it was always just for fun. We really did enjoy going live. But sometimes here and there I would see other people do like better. get more followers, get yeah. like do better than us. And, you know, you know, it, it's always bad to compare and kind of like... It's and it's easy to. Yeah, yeah, it's always bad to compare yourself with others, like no matter if it's followers, looks ass whatever like it's always bad to do that like that would just always be in the back of my mind like fuck like am i doing good with this tiktok stuff like i just hope i do good i saw this tiktok that said um other people's success is not your failure i think that's what it was but yeah like just because you see other people do good succeed it doesn't mean you can't so that's like kind of what i would tell myself is just because you see other people do good doesn't mean you're not or you can't. Honestly, what I would tell my younger self is we made it to LA. Honey, we LA influencers. Honestly, that's all I would tell my younger self because we would literally always talk about coming to LA. Like that was honestly the point where I made it. Honestly, I made, we made it. it. I think we made we it. LA influencer, honey. No, yeah, but honestly, like we would always write letters to our older selves and be like, oh, I hope you made it this far, or this far, or this far. And it was always like, I hope you made it big, like in the influencer world. And now we influencers. BBL coming soon. Why am I? Anyway. <laughs> Should we talk shit Wait. about Alan Nice or not? Okay. Um, how does it feel? Ew, this is my best. How does it feel being unalanized honestly like oh, no. <laughs> honestly like i feel like it's such a good opportunity so i would like to think thank alan i would like to thank everyone who like mentioned us 
you know, yep. I would like to thank everyone because this is such a great opportunity, I guess. Yep. Yeah. What do you guys see yourself doing in the next five years? Ya para terminar esta entrevista. Yeah. Well, I hope like I could still do social media because that's always been my dream. But, you know, you never know what happens. I just hope I'm doing good with Valentina. I hope everything in my life is going good. But my dream is to continue social so, Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> my dream is to continue social media so hopefully like i'm blessed enough to like keep continue this doing yeah it. continue doing this in five years i see myself in a mansion why young man? wagon. just kidding no honestly in five years no don't just kidding that no, no, I'm, no, just, no. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, i'm like yeah. manifest that not joking i actually see myself in a mansion and honestly just manifesting it pink mansion black mansion yg wagon black g wagon okay that's the goal guys in five years five we're gonna years. be Wait, no, five years, we come back and we see? We're going to be 25. That's great. You guys are going to be the age I am. Yeah. But you're going to be 30. I'm going to be 30. Oh, my future, future. Alan, what do you got to say to yourself? Like, I don't know. I hope I'm still doing what I'm doing. You know, yeah. like, I feel like I've been doing this for so long that it's always kind of scary to know how much longer people are going to support you. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like I'm so blessed. And, you know, I'm just, yeah. I don't know. I'm excited for the future. Me miro. Ojalá que en un futuro. Maybe not five, because I feel like I still have to work more. I do would want to host shit on TV, you know, Ooh, like something like even so a red good. carpet. Yeah. I don't know la verga lo que me quieran hacer, pero I would want to do something with like interviewing, like yeah. at a bigger level. Not saying that this isn't like a big level, but like right. maybe like in Telemundo, Univision, yeah. algo mm -hmm. así. Ojalá que si nos pasa, amigas. Pero ya para terminar, ¿qué mensaje les pueden dar ustedes a sus girls? Well, I feel like my, I kind of like was so excited to be on here just to thank them. Like that's all I had, like plan was to thank them so thank you guys so much i know like we haven't really said thank you mm -hmm. but we are very grateful i know it doesn't seem like much i know we're not like kylie jenner level but even like one support like that shit is so crazy to me and i do hope you guys realize like how thankful we are because sometimes i see people say thank you i'm like this bitch is like like they don't look thankful no, yeah but i just like hope they know you know like okay start I'm, crying start crying I'm like, well, they, they're not gonna know <laughs> no, if you're not, not crying. crying. No, but no, I like I just really hope yeah. you guys know. Well, we're, we're both thankful. very grateful. Even sometimes we don't go live and we're sorry, but we are grateful. We try to like keep you updated as much. We hope you guys really do feel like you guys are friends because you guys are. But yeah, don't forget, fuck bitches, get money. Yeah. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you, girls, for taking no, the time you. out of your day. You know, for coming out here. En verdad que sí lo aprecio. Yo sé que allá en casita no nomás yo las pude conocer un poquito más, pero todas ustedes que están mirándonos allá las pueden conocer un poquito yeah. más and maybe are able to understand you guys more of how you guys are why you guys do certain things si eso en verdad que que salí hoy bien como informado wey ya, ya yeah. mañana me pueden preguntar lo que quieran de Wendy <laughs> Evelyn y yo voy a saber todo yeah. so I just want to say thank you guys so much for you. you know coming and just sharing and being vulnerable porque en verdad que es algo que es muy difícil hacer and yeah. I just want to thank everyone so much for watching wait we want to thank you yeah. for flying us out. everything yeah. thank you so thank much you so Thank you guys. No, I really do. Cuando yo miré todos los comentarios, yo dije, no. Mi gente en verdad las quiere ver, yeah. en verdad quieren esa entrevista. So we made yeah. everything happen. And just thank you guys for being such, you know, a joy to work with. Yeah. And I just want to say you guys are so genuine. I love it. Thank igual you. como son online, you guys. Igual a 100 personas. I just thank wish you guys the best in the future. You too. En todo mm -hmm. lo que quieran hacer. Tele mundo, coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If you guys don't already follow them, make sure you guys go ahead and follow them. I will leave the link down below as well as on the screen. Y también no se les olvide seguirme a mí para que no se pierdan de any future episode. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, Bye guys. That was so Bye. good.